What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Race Chip. Race Chip offers plug and play performance upgrades for factory turbocharged or supercharged cars. You see, turbo and supercharged cars leave some power on the table from the factory, but they are relatively easy to change once you get those cars home. Race Chip offers a healthy increase in power and torque of up to 30%. Also, better fuel economy. Computers can do that. They have easy plug and play installation in 15 minutes, and there are specific manuals and videos available on YouTube. All the engine protection mechanisms remain active because it doesn't actually modify the ECU itself. Race chip is easy to remove, and after removal, the car is completely stock in its condition again. It's tested and approved by TÜV, that's the German uh, testing authority. They're much stricter than here in America. And uh, there's a five-year warranty, a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can get control of your car with the Race Chip app, which syncs up to it. You give them a follow over on Instagram at Race Chip chip tuning they say chip twice it's race chip chip tuning that's because it's based in germany and in germany tuning is called chip tuning so that's that that's sort of a thing uh hit them up on youtube and facebook for daily content dyno runs and tests of their product if you want to increase the power of your car in a healthy way choose race chip for quality made in germany go to racechip.us that's r-a-c-e-c-h-i-p.us and in the month of July, Race Chip has a special offer for you. Use code Smoking Tire to get 10% off your order. That's limited to one Race Chip per customer, only the month of July. Racechip.us, simply faster. That's Racechip.us, code Smoking Tire. Uh, we got a new one this week. You may have seen them on the gram. It's Nextspace, the world's leading dash cam brand. These cameras are now available in the U.S. Get video evidence of bad drivers, parking lot perpetrators. Don't let dealers get away with hooning your whip. Protect your ride. Plus, we've got life-saving emergency features to protect you and your family. Next base cameras give you peace of mind while you drive. Their brand new Series 2 range includes five different dash cam models packed with features to meet any driver's budget. We've got stunning image quality up to 1440p, an IPS touchscreen, intelligent parking mode detected, which, which detects and automatically records any movement around your vehicle while parked. It's like a security camera. Don't worry about parking lot hidden runs. Potentially life saving emergency SOS features which might save your life. The auto sync feature uses Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to send video files to your smartphone through the My Next Space Connect app. And uh, some of these models have built-in Alexa, so you can talk to your dash cam. There's cabin and rear-facing models. There are literally too many features to list in this ad. The full Next Space Series 2 range is available at Best Buy stores nationwide in the U.S., Canada, online at bestbuy.com and at amazon.com. Now, here's how you get your discount. Here's the good part. Listeners of this show, get 15% off the next base 3322GW with GPS, Wi-Fi, emergency, SOS, intelligent parking mode and more. Use code, you ready? 15 next base ST. Write it down, folks. The number 15 next base ST. I tried to get him to make it easier, but it was too late. They made it hard. I'm sorry. Ready? 15 Next Base ST. Buy it on Amazon and get some security in your vehicle with the Next Base 322 GW dash cam. And while we're at it, let's take a jump to the left and talk about shaving. You know, every guy has a buzzer, a beard trimmer. You might trim some other things with it. You never know. I ain't asking and you ain't telling. But everyone owns one and everyone who's ever had one has a story about a terrible one. One time or two times or ten times where a buzzer lets you down. No more, folks. No more. The Brio Beardscape is here. Here's why it's not going to let you down. It's got a battery life display in minutes so you know how long you can shave for before the 
battery dies. Typically, because the battery's huge, it's going to be a very long time and a lot of shavings. I charge my Be Brio Beardscape once a year. You've got a ceramic blade, which stays sharper longer than stainless steel, and it won't rust, so you don't have to oil it as much. That's helpful. It's got a high horsepower motor, so even if you've got the Habibi beard like I do, it cuts right through that. Right through it. And uh, in general, they've got good customer service, so they're there to help out. God forbid your Brio Beardscape fails, they will take care of it. They're good people at Brio. I'm happy to advertise their product. It is a really nice product. I've started giving them away as gifts. They're actually, I've just been buying them and giving them away as gifts. They're dope. Upgrade yourself, son, to the Beardscape. Go to code, uh, go to uh, the website, brio4life.com, that's B-R-I-O, the number four, life.com, and get yourself a Beardscape with code SMOKING, best price on the internet, code SMOKING at brio, the number four, life.com. Lastly, Auto Tempest. You're shopping for cars. Maybe you want to buy. Maybe you want to sell and see what your car's worth. Maybe you're just browsing the market. Here's what Auto Tempest does. It just keeps you from doing double work, right? You got to do work. There's no getting out of work, right? What you never want to have to do is double work. And that just wastes time, and time is money, therefore it wastes money. Got it? Auto Tempest takes all these car sites where all these cars are listed, where people buy and sell, like Cars.com, Cars Direct, Cars Soup, eBay Motors, etc. It brings all the results together into one place. So you don't have to have a zillion tabs open looking through a zillion listings to find the same cars listed four or five times. It does that work for you. It then compares those results to Auto Trader and Craigslist nationally. No searching city by city and state by state on Craigslist. We're talking national, folks. Auto Tempest makes my life easier. I used it to comp my cars. My SL, when I just sold it, had a price that out was based on uh, Auto Tempest listings and being able to bring all those results together uh, is very, very helpful. Uh, we love our friends at Auto Tempest and they've been very good to us. So please, folks, if you're looking for a car, just use Auto Tempest. Just use their service because they support us and we ask very little in return. Okay, on this episode of the show, we got uh, the staff of Road and Track. We got Kyle Kennard, and, uh, who is the senior editor, and we got Travis Akulski, who I can't believe I say this, is editor-in-chief. Uh, that's craziness. He's actually my boss, which is wild. Uh, but these guys are in town for the Corvette launch. So um, some of this, uh, now that this episode is out, the Corvette is out, uh, we tried to not speculate so we didn't sound too stupid. But um, there's a lot of talk about the new Corvette, and there's a lot of other, uh, another fun magazine review foibles and stories, uh, Road and Track staff, on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Here we go. You know, no Pinot Noir is still fantastic. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I think ruined the Eagles, was the scene in The Big Lebowski <laughs> yes. where he's like, I hate the fucking Eagles, Don man. Don Headley's like, like, dude, come on. I swear. <laughs> we've that, been, that we've been talking the about the Eagles. We have been talking about like, this today. For about an hour. Also, the heard, fucking Eagles. Yeah. But they're not. I mean, I'll fall on this sword all day. Like the, the Eagles are awesome. They're great, but they don't have a, a single lead singer. And then that Lebowski thing, I think, just tanked. It's a, Hotel like, is it okay to like the Eagles, but totally admit that the dude is right in that scene? Yeah. Yes. Like, both can be true. Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're correct. You're <laughs> correct. <laughs> it's the Smoking Tire Podcast. What's up, fuckers? Do we have an audience, Zach? Oh, there they are. There's a delay, huh? No. Are we yeah. just not live? Should, no, we should be live. No. Oh. We'll, we'll see what they say. We'll see what they say. I don't know. Travis I Kulski, Kyle Kennard in the house. Hello. How Road and doing? track. Hi. Uh, I guess I work for these people, sort of. Allegedly. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Every other month. Yeah. Say something imposing, Travis. What happened no. to that? Zach, what happened to this shot? Why does it look at Travis's chest? Travis leaned Oh, because your microphone, oh, your I'm microphone a, uh, hit it. It, I think your microphone stand is about to knock that camera stand oh, over. No. That's why. Oh, that's totally. Oh insane. my gosh! Do fucking it up, man! Do you need me to sit up straight? Do you need more coffee, Zach? This one you more cut, or you less. is good. The answer is always less drugs or more drugs. It's up to Speed. you to decide which. Okay. All right. So we had some time to kill, right? So we went to uh, Delray Deli, like you recommended. Did for you lunch. like it? Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Great. Good sandwiches. Yeah. But Shout then out to Delray Deli. We still had a couple hours to kill, so we decided to get coffee. So we went to. We actually went to Venice. We went to Minotti's. Minotti's. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you guys know the spots. But All right. We were walking You're like locals. We were. We parked in like six miles away behind a. Uh, the guy had a. a it's called a dumpster. <laughs> no, it was. It was far in more insidious than yeah. a plain dumpster. But, but there, we what, saw. What was it? It was a cart with like a like a 
like a house. Can I say bang oh. shack? I think I can say bang. It was like this weird rickshaw. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It was yeah, like no, a poker, it was like a prostitute no, you know rickshaw. The homeless dudes in what? Venice build like their own like teardrop yeah. trailers oh, that yeah. they tow yeah, yeah, with yeah. bicycles. There yes, was a great yeah, day. Yeah. There was a great day inside. Yeah. Of it. Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so that Dude, was impressive. If, you're if you live in a teardrop trailer, yeah. a great day is not an appropriately sized bed. No. For a teardrop. But we we saw we but it's saw good transportation a, if you're homeless. But there was a person just we were Maybe walking towards it. the beach and there was somebody just standing there staring intently at something and we think that uh, she was trying one of the drugs that's uh, making a comeback. Oh yeah, welcome yeah. to my house. Yeah, it was. I was on my deck having coffee yesterday and I heard a woman talking uh, loudly to a tree, and she <laughs> said, and she said. It was one of the great quotes. She said, I'm on these drugs because the world just doesn't get me. Fair. To a tree. Fair. And, and the tree said... I understand you. <laughs> the tree said, you're really high, Susan. You need to calm down but, now. So then we get the coffee, right? And we're walking over towards the uh, the skate park just to watch the guys skating for a while. And there's this guy walks up. You know the people that walk up to you and they're waving like, hey, guys. And so like they want to talk to you or sell you something. Or, yes. You know, green CDs. Teas. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this there's this guy. He's got a button down on a bow tie. And Kyle and I both you realized in that Jalopnik? moment. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Mike Balaban. Uh, <laughs> Homeless now. <laughs> Just walking towards us. Um, you guys want to buy a teardrop trailer? trailer? <laughs> so Torchinsky drives. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it was Demiro. We did. We thought for a second it was yeah. Doug, but Doug's in Vietnam, so I don't think that works out. <laughs> but the guy was walking up to us and he's waving, and then. We, Kyle and I both realized something about ourselves about how we react in these situations. Kyle, we didn't, neither one of us stopped, first mm -hmm. off. Kyle just goes, hey man, and I go, no thanks, and we just <laughs> yeah. keep walking. And we realize that every time someone comes up to us, that's exactly how we it's react to them. It's an East Coast versus well, the that's West Coast. Perfectly, yeah. Mentality. You don't get offended, yeah. but you certainly don't stop. You keep it moving, no thanks, keep head down, go. The guy said to us, you're not even going to stop for me? And no, nope. we were not. No. no. We did not stop No, if you him. stop, he's got you. I know. Yeah. He's got you for at least 30 seconds if you stop. But I know. you don't, yeah, no. Not that I did anything better with those 30 seconds. <laughs> I have <laughs> seen, I have seen the guy, the guys with the CDs are the most impressive on Vet Speech because they're like, their hustle is really fucking hard. And I've heard them spit the same stupid fucking lines to people over and over for six years now. And almost every time I go, they've got somebody. Yep. People keep stopping. I've heard him tell him that he was going to give them tickets to his show in Seville. Like Seville? Heard, yeah. Oh, like where are you from? Oh, Spain? The one I'm playing in Seville. Espana? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you tickets. It's wow. ridiculous. Travis Is bought a mixtape, though. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was an eagle, it was an eagle's mixtape. <laughs> I, I, Don, Don Henley, Don was, Henley was sitting out there busking, and he was handing out mixtapes yeah. of uh, of uh, Hell Freezes Over. Them guys don't talk to me anymore because I fucking screamed at them one day, <laughs> like, "What year do you idiots think this is? I haven't had a CD player in eight years. Get me a fucking iTunes link." You were Robin Williams in Jumanji. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. What yeah, year is it? I, but it Jumanji. Worked. It worked. <laughs> yeah. They don't speak to me anymore now. Good. It's good. That worked out. It, it's, uh, the goal I wanted was a thousand percent achieved. <laughs> is this why people listen to this is to hear you talk about just random musings on, on Venice Beach? Pretty much. We just have this. We have this freedom. That's usually the this first couple purview. minutes and then eventually we get to cars. But it yeah. starts with it starts with like things that annoy us. Let's just do that the whole time. Yeah. It, though we have shows like yeah. that. It's a nice break from cars to do this it show is. about cars. It's not about cars. <laughs> I'm sure people tune in to see, uh, you know, road and track and talk, talk about any cars. Yeah. I but think for real that people listen to this show because they want to know what people who do the jobs that we do talk about when we sit around a table drinking coffee or beer. I yeah. think that's yeah. the actual point of this show. You're in good company if it's not cars. Yeah, usually. Yeah. But we fucking talk about shit besides cars. There's always cars, too. Yeah. There's always some cars. They're out there. Yeah, they exist. Shout out to the Chevy Blazer we got today. Oh, bro. Man. I think it's the same one, actually, that... Oh, who the fuck was here recently? Some other uh, some other fucking magazine folks came in recently, and I swear brought the same gray Chevy Blazer here. Maybe that's what they give it out to people for, just to come here. <laughs> yeah, it's that's the, exactly. It's the smoking tire special. Yeah. Smoking tire shuttle? Yeah. The TST shuttle from LAX. Yeah. That My TST shuttle, the title has just arrived. Ooh. 91 Mitsubishi Delica. We are in the you fucking You got a Hizzo. Delica? I did get a Delica. Oh. I'm really excited about it. Where'd you get it? From Sean at Top Rank at Importer yeah. Vehicle. Okay. Yeah. It is. Do you know what a Delica is? Yeah, I know what a Delica <laughs> is. Is it? I run a, a car magazine. I think, Zach, I think second row all the way on the right is the closest to what it actually looks like. Yeah. It has the weird white bar on it oh, like yes. that. 
and it does have the the fog lights on it like that too. I'm taking it down. Um, but Tim is gonna set me up with his powder coater. We're gonna black all that shit out. Nice. Yeah. Fifteen fifty two Turbo Max. Oh man. That's yes. that, that's that good shit. That's that good shit. Yeah. That's so you're, that you're replacing the SL with this? I sold the SL. Right. So you're replacing. Is this a replacement? Yeah. This is this is for Hannah to drive an automatic car. <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> but you're making so you're making heroic. her sit on the right side as punishment. She wanted to. She thought this was cool. I took her to drive it, and she thought it was hilarious and awesome, and wanted and was all about it. Driving, you got, you got, got a cool wife. You got to keep her. Yeah, which is good because so I kept you're, her. You're like on this off road path now because you got your 911 right, and then now <laughs> you're in one Zach, of these. Zach, yes. Can we can we please <laughs> find that? That's ex that's a Delica where there is air in between the bottom of the body and Jeez. the top of the tires. That is just straight body lift, I think. Yeah. That's so uh you can fit a Delica under we, your Delica. You should get, you should get Dennis dog. Anderson on the Oh my the horn god, that really that. is. Look, I, like the suspension travel hasn't really increased because you can look at the C V joints, they're not aimed down at all. So I think they just raised the body like <laughs> yeah. up two feet. It's what a are you dirty just body terrible. Answer. Can I ask a question? When you raise the body two feet, yeah. What do you put you just put just right? Is it just poles? Just, just scaffolding? It's a lot of blocks. You see, like, looks like Chevy's doing that. Scaffolding? Like those houses you see on, like, the Jersey Shore that are built on stilts? Yeah. 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 My wife's from uh, Long Beach, New York, which yeah. is, like, ha Hurricane Sandy Ground Zero, and the, they're building, everything's going on well, stilts. That's, that's the regulation now it's in that crazy. sort of place. They're tall as they're The so regulation, tall. because ocean. Yeah, because. That's scary. Yeah. Well, yeah, because, you know, the world will is kill Is this up you. to code? No, this is not up to code yet. It's got to be raised above the ocean, then it's up to code. <laughs> If the ocean hits it, it's uh, it's off code. We need to protect you from nature. <laughs> <laughs> nature is your enemy. You actually need two more fire exits here, and then the ocean is coming in the front door, so that's a problem as you well. You need drain plugs <laughs> in the floor. <laughs> you need a carbon monoxide filter and also to not be in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> you can move this house about 40 miles inland. <laughs> If we put you in Pennsylvania, then you're in code. <laughs> you're good for at least 30, 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Oh God, the code. That's what one of my neighbors says. That's like the, his wife wants to buy a beach house. Mm -hmm. And he says, just wait a little bit. Yeah. And the beach yeah. will be right here. Buy a third row yeah. house. Yeah. And then <laughs> wait 40 exactly. years. And it's a well, we're talking about our town, which is like 35 miles in from the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Just give it time. Give it a time. little bit. It'll be just fine. Yeah. Know, yeah. I'm worried my house is going to be underwater soon. Oh, uh, what's the worst that could? Oh, I guess that is the worst. Death. That could <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that, could that's die. pretty much it. Um, Did you want a saltwater it. pool? I wanted, a, I wanted a salt water bedroom. Yeah, <laughs> water beds are still a thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I was re I read a thing about that about water bed salesmen. They're like still like there's still like a niche market of people who buy water beds I'd and they love sell to like, go to sure. the they sell in like Vegas. two or three a year. So many ponytails. So what many toupees. What do you think yeah. the water beds like SEMA for water beds <laughs> look for like? Water beds. Small. Yeah. Uh, we 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 water bed. WMA? No, I don't know. I bet every time I've moved it into an apartment, the lease says you cannot have a waterbed. Like, oh, yeah. It's on everything. It, yeah. If it explodes, you got a right. problem. It yeah. just destroys an entire but, building. But yeah. you're, you're a waterbed guy, I am as a, we know. I am a waterbed so guy. You Look, just, I yeah. like to fuck, but I don't always want to put in the effort to fuck. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> so I want the bed to do the effort for me. All right. Slam your fist in the all waves right, to the right, right. Look, you can put a waterbed in the back of a truck, man. That's all I'm saying. Have you ever actually slept in one? Yes. Well, no, you don't I sleep. Have. You try. <laughs> yeah. You float. My grandparents, like, second bedroom had once when I was a kid. We tried to sleep in it all the time. It's a disaster. Totally. Yeah, it's not good. I tried it once. It's horrible. It's there's like no, sleeping nothing. on an Sorry, earthquake there's no, fault. There's no punchline. It just was miserable. <laughs> you can't sleep. It's like, no joke. It's, okay. it's just not comfortable. Apparently, not. the people who have them like swear by them, yeah. and they never need to be replaced. So that's why the waterbed pirates places, like, love I was all, gonna say, they all are, go are away. They, well, they you don't have pirates? to replace the springs. You just like they never <laughs> add some water. Well, the water's gone bad. We got to <laughs> fill her back up again. They never have to be replaced, <laughs> and nobody will fuck you on one. And so it just oh, the, I don't know. the gene just dies. So there's like 15 people that have them on a waterbed. Huh? What? My, the best man at my wedding. I know he was conceived on a water. I don't conceived. Yeah. Well, but that was probably like thirty years ago. It was, gonna, yeah. 30, is, it, wait, ago. is it hereditary? Is he a waterbed guy? He is a waterbed actually. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> he is a he is a waterbed that speaks to me, and he couldn't attend my wedding because he was a waterbed. But he's like something anyway. about this feels so familiar. He just knows it. <laughs> I feel like it's prime time to change the subject. <laughs> Cars. So, Travis, you're the editor in chief of a uh, major magazine. <laughs> someone gave you a job. Mm. I, it, 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 you out. know, every day is disbelief. We've done 
We just actually closed. Good or bad disbelief? Here's your badge <laughs> you know, in your water bed, son. It, I, I, it, it's, it's really amazing, seriously, to see this stuff come together. It's really rewarding, more so than I thought. It's a lot more work <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, like a lot. It's a lot of work. <laughs> like I, I <laughs> only, I only work, but it's great. I mean, we've been doing a lot of, I think, last time we were here, we were talking about we are going to do a 20-page feature on Formula One. And, and you the did. August issue has a 20-page feature on did Formula it. One. Yeah. And, you know, we're trying we're trying a lot of stuff that we haven't done, um, and we haven't done before, and that I don't think you'll see at any other publication. I mean, Roan Track has, you know, 72 years of history, and it's got to be, everything's got to feel special. And I don't want you to read Roan Track and say, I could have gotten that in Car and Driver, I could have gotten that in Motor Trend. And you shouldn't, you know, you should, everything should have its own distinct personality. And I think that we're, starting to get there with R&T. I think the next issue is a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to people seeing that one. Can you say what it is? It's <laughs> So it was going to be, we were going to do an issue about um, the bubble economy in Japan, but we realized that we had to go to Japan <laughs> for that. <laughs> and uh, first off, that's expensive. And magazines, they come up on you quick. You think like, oh, I got so much time, but four weeks is not a lot of time to make magazines. This one fell on a four-week cycle. So instead, we used some of the stories we were going to do, but it also fell under the idea of being unexpected. Mm. So the um, Million Mile Lexus makes it because that's the car no one expected Lexus to make. There's a 1975 Honda that was the first like impetus for Type R. It's a Civic RS. Peter Cunningham has one. Really? Zach Bowman went and drove it. Yeah. Is it cool? It is cool. It's, it's cool. like it's like double the horsepower of a 1975 Civic. It's really? the first one so with a five like speed. So it's got like 85 horsepower. Yeah. yeah. But there are only about. Is it a homologation race car? No. no why did, no. Why was it made? No. It was what just was it like called an, again? Say again. Civic, Civic R- RS. Yeah. And it's a uh, what year was it? It was seventy like five. Yeah, mid seventies. So um, it was the first obscure. Civic with a five speed. Uh, it had a ton of power. They only they they made a ton of them, but you know, as happens with all those sort of cars, there's only like fifty left in the world. This is the only one in America. They don't really give you extra gears anymore when you buy the up version, do they? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Wait, wait, is, wait. The ZR one does not, not have a ten tr- speed manual. No, no. Does yeah. that? <laughs> What ha- what's going to happen to the fucking manual now, man? Seven isn't better than six. No, in, in many ways it's worse. It's worse in yeah. most of the ways, yeah. actually. There's got to be an upper limit, though, right? Like, we're at ten now for an uh, automatic? For an automatic. For automatics, like, yeah. <laughs> where no does it stop? There's no upper limit. I, I mean, How I th- physically big? Have you ever seen a ten-speed gearbox? Is it huge? Is it the same size as a six-speed? I, I, I think they are. They're not. They're not that big. Like yeah. the new, that new, um, the one that's shared between, I think GM and Ford. That yeah. ten-speed is. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an a, automatic transmission. Yeah, but it's not. I don't think it's any bigger necessarily than like. I the, mean. There, it's gonna. There's gonna be as many gears as they can shove in there until it so. until it gets too big or too heavy to be useful. Is right? it all just like a transition to ease us into CVT for everything uh, or electric? Well, or electric? But, but, the C, but all the CVTs are being made to feel like automatic. Yeah, right? right. They all have yeah. all those fake ratios because people when a CVT is operating optimally, it's in the power band the entire time. But then you get that drone and people are like, I don't like the drone. It turns but out then people so, don't actually like that. Yeah. Right. But then they want something that gets fuel economy and they make the CVT, but they make it act like an automatic. So I'm gonna just put an automatic in it. I don't. Get, but then six gears is like the right number of gears. Yeah, because the because of the middle thing, because of the return, the, because the stick even, needs to return to the middle, and if you have seven, there's no longer a true middle. Well, even an automatic. Oh, yeah, right? that's right. Yeah, that's that's an interesting thought. Yeah, yeah. The, that's su- like a four speed with yeah. a middle and a six speed with a middle. Yeah. It's there's okay. a symmetry there that no longer exists. Yeah. yeah. And if you made it an eight speed. It would just be fucking weird. Like a dump truck. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. First, first and six, a half. Six is the right number. Yeah. First and a half, like a semi-truck. Yeah. Have you guys driven anything 18 speed? No. Yeah, once for like a minute and it was impossible. They're they're fun. Yeah, it was weird as hell. They're great. I, I, um, I, far- I used to farm. Really? Yeah. What, what did you farm? Driving a wheat. You don't uh, look really? like you used to farm at all, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> if I were, when you look directly at Kyle, you think that uh, guy grew up and lived yeah. in the city his entire life. <laughs> Just a good old boy. <laughs> he is cosmopolitan. Uh, what yeah. kind of machinery did you drive to farm wheat? You know, they've got grain trucks. That's what I was driving, oh, okay. but they've got combines. They wouldn't let me uh, do one of those because I flipped a grain truck. Um, <laughs> wait a second. That's, uh, Let's just not gloss wait, over what? that. I'm Back the it up only a bit. member of Road and Track staff to have successfully flipped a grain truck, I think. 
Um, so unless far. you've got something I have in the closet. Not, I've like only flipped a go kart. There. I've never flipped a yeah. green truck. They took okay. your caterpillar key away. They're like, maybe try yeah. automotive journalism. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, here, it's okay if you do yeah. this. <laughs> if you, if, if, if <laughs> you like flip a green truck, it automatically no, tell, qualifies you. Tell that you. story. That, that That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was, uh, I was like 15, 16 years old, and uh, they somehow trusted me to drive a grain truck for the whole summer. And... Um, when they're fully loaded, they don't drive quite as nice uh, as, as they do when they're empty. So I got up like three quarters of the way up this hill, and uh, the truck didn't have enough power to make it. Oh, um, And this is like a 40-year-old grain truck. Um, so I stopped on the hill, and instead of radioing back and being like, hey, I'm 15, I don't know what I'm doing, uh, somebody come help me, I Pro- thought like, I'm going to back you. down this hill. And of course, they have air brakes, so you actually have like a limited amount of time that the I don't know exactly how they work, but there's like a compressor that provides braking force. But if you're not driving, it's not like filling the reservoir to keep compression on the brakes. Yeah. So like you have a little air gauge that's telling you like your brake pressure is running out. <laughs> and so I, I felt like, okay, I got to back this thing down a hill. So I started going in reverse down this hill. And uh, another truck started heading up the hill, and you like you don't want to oh, you don't sounds... want to like fuck anybody else's run up the hill up. Um, so I tried to get out of the way, and I was in reverse and put a wheel over the embankment, and then the uh, the truck just rolled uh, a couple times. <laughs> so you didn't get in his uh, way. And it's uh, yeah, I didn't get. Did he make it? Up, did the other yeah. guy make it up the hill just fine? I'm sure he did. Okay. Um, but I remember, I remember as the um, as the truck was rolling, I was holding onto the steering wheel. Jesus and. I held on to it enough that it flipped me around in the cab, and I just kind of was laying there Whoa. Um, um, no seat, in the no cab. Seat belt? No seat They don't have seat belts. Oh. I mean, it's like these things were... They don't expect people to be rolling them off the Well, you're, like, one, you're not supposed from, to like, roll them. Before they were mandated. <laughs> yeah, on the fact like, that I'm like, should we put seat belts in? It's like, Ted, what could happen? <laughs> Who's going to roll one of these? This goes 12 miles an hour on a good day. <laughs> There's also this, like, redneck Valhalla thing where, like, if you get in a crash, you're just expected to take it like a man and go through the windshield, <laughs> yeah. you know? And it's then... Like, like, dust yourself off and get yeah, in there. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think people just did that. Like Chuck Yeager, you know, he was just like getting in motorcycle crashes and then breaking the sound barrier back back then. And, and we just... They Only the make, gays break bones, they, Kyle. They, <laughs> they, don't, they don't make them like they used to. So, you know, you obviously... Remember, like Howard Hughes snap. like crashes his plane in Hollywood exactly. and was like, ha, 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 ha. Someone or, Har- or Harrison Ford just with, crashing at LAX. With enough barbiturates, you can survive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, man. So How many times did it flip over? Um, just like one and a half. Whoa. Did, oh, it, did it go back in service? Uh, it did, yeah. yeah. Actually, um, they're, they're tough old bastards, those trucks. They, um, they wheeled it into the shop that night, sent me home. Um, and then when I showed up the next day, they had the the uh, bed of the truck all straightened out, and they nice. told me, "Now you're driving the even shittier truck. You don't even get this old one with no seat belts." I had the most decrepit truck for the rest of the summer. You had to stand up while you were driving it. Yeah. <laughs> it had a water bed in it. I just I don't know why it didn't feel safe. <laughs> oh man, scary Green trucks. Yeah, yeah. It's man. not something you want to be tumbling around in. I I lived. You did. Good for you. Maybe, or this could be some sort of or, elaborate yeah. afterlife <laughs> this, um, that I'm being trolled in by the Almighty. <laughs> Who knows? Well, that, that's, you, I yeah, mean, that's that, that the, is the kind of story that gets you a job at Road and Track Magazine. Yeah, I'd never heard it till today. I don't know if it gets to... Does it get... Do you lose your job? <laughs> do you have to keep your job just, for it? You're fired. I'll, con- I'll consider <laughs> yeah. that over the next... Leave your shirt and your headphones and get out of here. I'm very bad at being intimidating. <laughs> in any way. I know. Yeah, exactly. You That fa- that facial expression. So, what? Yeah. Well, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of you all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Can we talk about rich energy? Yeah. Can we ever? <laughs> yeah. What has gone on with this company? Has anybody Is it tried it? a real it? company? Has anybody tried the no. drink? No. Chris Harris tried it. Yeah, I some saw other, that. Uh, some people in England tried it. Where do you get it? England. Apparently, it's very it's very difficult to find, which it shouldn't be, and that's part of why this yeah. company is so that's confusing. That's a problem. Um, so, Rich Energy is a company that sponsored sponsors sponsored. No, they spon- well, sp- they they changed their name the other day. To, they did to what? Lightning to Volt. Yeah, Lightning like Volt to, Limited. It's Lightning like Volt. Lightning Lightning Line. Lightning Volt. <laughs> Lightning Volt. And they were sponsoring Haas F1. Yeah. And the guy uh, who runs this company looks like Magnus Walker on steroids, basically. <laughs> Weird steroids. Weird steroids. Yeah. And oh yeah, there he is with the beard, and uh, 
that's Wait, a, is, is it that guy? He looks guy like he's on Duck Dynasty. No, that's no, that is that's, that's guy. him. This guy on he, Duck he makes, Dynasty. He makes, Dynasty. He makes sure. duck calls and uh, a British energy drink company. <laughs> and apparently, his his Twitter is also just the company Twitter. Yeah, and he just just I don't know does coke and tweets all all day and just is crazy. I would make an Elon joke, but I'm gonna leave it. I mean, it, it is slightly muskian. But, but, but with, well, with a product that is like hard to find and doesn't make any sense, and then like, yeah, well, like obviously this people you did, they didn't ma- sell this shit to earn the money to sponsor right. this team. That's the bit. Well, did you right? So there was a rumor like, not like two seasons ago that this company was going to buy Force India, the whole team. Okay, <laughs> and people were like, Rich Energy. What the hell was Rich Energy? First off, no one can find it. Second off, this guy seems like a Looney Tune. Yeah. The third, uh, it never happened because they didn't have the their offer was ridiculous. They're ridiculously low, or there was something like that. So then they come in as the sponsor of Haas. Which, you know, you can't find the product anywhere. We have no idea what the financial arrangements of the thing are. And then, like, just the other week, there's this company, White Bikes. <laughs> oh, yeah. W-H-Y-T-E. Yeah. Yes. Oh. What? Yes. Which makes it's, no, they, 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 they make, pronounced it's pronounced what? They make really good bikes. And, 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 but their logo but, is the same wait, as is that the rich- current, Zach? That's a current Rich Energy Twitter? Yeah. Like, they didn't change their name on their Twitter? I, they, they, I mean, it's been like 45 minutes, right? They don't have time so to wh- make a new I logo. I don't understand the like their purview here. It is it is an energy drink for people who wear tuxedos but also are deer. Like, their logo is like a, a, like a deer's is horns, right? Like right? What is very I thought they said get ready deer, to rage. Though. I don't know who who buys it. Nobody, because um, they can't find it anywhere. Is it the? Ex- it's like the exclusive beverage of the fire Festival. No, I guess. That well, look. Work. Okay. So, what, so uh, white. This is white bikes' joke. logo, and I think white bikes won their they lost yeah, they had, recently. Yeah, they won an injunction against Rich that they can't use the stag logo anymore. Like, oh, it's, because it's yours intrigue. goes dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah. Mine yeah. goes dun 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 dun. dun. Well, you see, white bikes has four <laughs> spines off of their antlers, and we have six. But so mine oh. goes, so, so ours goes dun 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 dun. It's it's a hundred percent the same, but they added two spikes. Uh, I saw people saying that they thought that this whole thing was a PR move for white bikes. That white bikes was actually rich energy, and they were <laughs> well, see, having that's a few, funny. I that would be amazing. That if it What's were true. even funnier was I saw it suggested that it was all a social media intern working for Red Bull that, that uh, did it, or for that would also be amazing. Mercedes, which to, I think is even funnier. Yeah. Well, that's more logical than some Duck Dynasty guy, like actually having this kind of money. But right? F- this is actually this is not like out of the world for F one. I mean, there were so many sponsors in Formula One that have you know cryptic beginnings yeah. or no money. There was like a Moneytron, which was that company that <laughs> was they were back in the eighties that funded a team that like barely existed. Yeah. There's a whole ton of there these companies. Like people, <laughs> people so many F1 people have gone to jail car. that are F one adjacent. Yeah. So it's it's you know like the Force India guy. Well he's still he was at the he's like so he was hiding, at Silverstone. Right? He no, he was at the race last week. Where can he not go? He can't out go of to England. In, oh, I can't leave England. Yeah. Yeah. Right. His <laughs> passport. Tron. Yeah, bro. Oh, that's great though. Yeah. I, I think I need to livery a car in that. The Delica. Yeah. I think <laughs> that should be <laughs> the Delica. The Money Tron Delica. No, you yeah. know what I'm actually looking at for real. I think I'm gonna get a new scooter because I want a little bit faster scooter. And I sort of I saw a scooter that was liveried like an F1 pit bike, yeah. and it was yeah. amazing. And I'm thinking. <laughs> I think I'm going to need, so need a, Vespa, obscure. a Vespa with a money tron. <laughs> you get that, or like a Raybrig sort of livery from an NSX <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah. You know, one of the classics. Like yeah, Jordan money tron is. Ooh, a, great a seven up name. Jordan. Yeah, seven up yeah. Jordan. Yeah, seven up a real company. <laughs> Allegedly, <laughs> for now. What is that one, Zach? The Raybrig, Raybrig? Raybrig NSX. What's Raybrig? It's a Japanese company. I don't. Well, do one. Of, do the '90s one. Mm. The the. It's that's, a very. That's a really pretty like blue color. That, yeah, the middle one on that row, on the second on the first row. Oh. The purple guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. shit! Is that really what the car looked like? Yeah, man. Yo, that's sexy as hell. Actually, that is from Gran Turismo. <laughs> but that it is, is what the car looked like in real life. Wow, this is huge. Imagine yeah. what it'd be Nevertheless, like. that's actually what it looked like, and that's yeah. cool. That's that like all the JGTC <sighs> stuff from back then was super yeah. Rare. true. Yeah, that's fucking sexy. That's like some real. It's got the front end is very Ford GT ish, isn't it? 
So ra- that yeah. sort of round. Ra- I guess the maybe the colored. It's is like the headlights are NSX, and other than that, it's yeah, and the, then maybe the back. But yeah, that snorkel on the top. I don't know if I can find a real picture, but yeah, it's aggressive purple. Oh, that's this real. Is, that's really it. This, <laughs> that's it in the race. Look at it. It's Fantastic. more Gran Turismo footage for people listening. Real life doesn't look like that to you. Yeah, don't My you see, life don't you is see things Gran Turismo, bro. You see things in 32-bit? <laughs> yes. How many bits are there in a video game console these days? Remember when I, when I was growing up, it would be like yeah. Sega Genesis, wow, 16-bit, and then it was Sega yeah. Saturn, 32-bit, 32. and then it was Nintendo 64. N64 was it 64-bit. And then yeah. Dreamcast was Dreamcast and PS2 were 128. GameCube, GameCube was 128. Aren't video cards like... 256 and 512 is now is that what the bits I mean made? they've got Wasn't like that stor- that's storage that's stor- though that's memory in the card and they've Wait, got I mean, like four five, isn't 5k that's a screen that's, that's a resolution yeah. but that's not yeah. per inch right so it's 30 32 bit would be 32 bits per inch right is that's that how it? that worked I I'm not certain. Know. I just know the graphics got better as the bits got yeah. bigger. Some fucking li- for some the most part right yeah, now is screaming guy. at their yeah. well. I'm, I'm on hardware. video game There's forums now, and they basically say that they stopped measuring things in bits. It, it like everything got up to like 128, but then it, it started going back down because they just don't use it anymore. Mm. Well, that was a time when Bill Gates was saying like 64 megabytes of memory was all you could ever need for computing in the future. And listen, it is. I never use more than 64 megabytes of data for anything. I believe that you. seems wasteful to even use that much. <laughs> <Waste>. <laughs> yeah. My whole life fits on 48 <laughs> megabytes, really. <laughs> when you think about it. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I was I'm, I've been I dug out all my old consoles. I have a ton of old like Sega uh-huh. stuff, and I've been trying to play them. But the, I have a Saturn, and the Does graph it work. Yeah, it totally works. Okay. But TVs are now too good oh, for yeah. the Saturn. Yeah. You got the CRTs. There's a um, so like Super Smash Brothers yeah. on the uh, on the GameCube is like this huge. It's people still play it competitively like crazy. And it's created this, not like a black market, but this market for CRT TVs, like the right. shitty things no that we way. just yeah, like grew players. up yeah, sitting in the corner of your rec room that your parents handed down from the early 90s. And so now like good CRTs with a, like a quick refresh rate are like gold. Huh. Well, it's true because I was trying to play like, I don't know, it wasn't even a good game. It was like Clockwork Night or uh, Knights, one of those games on my Saturn. I couldn't even follow along because the TV was too good and the graphics were so shitty. That's so it strange. Like, it was yeah. blocks really moving around. Yeah, like I tried, I, like Sega GT, not Sega GT, uh, Sega Rally. I tried to play, and like oh, it was good. moving that's around. Everything was moving so quickly and the, the, the pixels are so big in the game. Like yeah. I couldn't follow anything. It was really weird because I would sit bummer. for hours and play that when I was a kid. Every once in a while, I'm just going through Reddit and I see people who come up with these like crazy gaming like walls where they have like a like shelving with yeah. like every console on it like it's like 30 consoles like all throughout history and you just yeah. like fucking nuts can you go projector is that a way around it right no Might crts be. are the best yeah. crts like for, are still the best if you're really serious about it getting it's like you know it's like having the the aftermarket um you know in period thing for yeah, your car yeah. like getting yeah, the like right getting, getting, like getting the, the right, right radar detector million wheels yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah. It's, it's having that right thing is like how you have to do it yeah, I mean, I'm not that hardcore into it, but I would. Well, you should just give up then. Uh, just I, kill might as well. Point, yeah. Well, no. So I have a I have a Genesis <laughs> Nomad too. And I was playing that say. handheld, and it was good. That was nice. Yeah, that was nice. I love was you. Kind of What's the best console <laughs> of all me. time? Um, of all time, best console ever. I think the Genesis. Uh, I, or, the, or the original or PlayStation. NES. Or the I was. Uh, that was strong. That was a strong step. Yeah. It was N64. Gold also good. You can Mario an Kart Gold- 64 and GoldenEye are the two S- like yeah. Super Mario 64, Ocarina of Time. Yeah. GoldenEye nice took gem. up so much of my time. Yeah. Because I had what yeah. four controllers. All my friends would come over. We'd just sit there for like eight hours. Gold Knight was like it was whoever the had the biggest TV. Yep. And then you play like eight <laughs> player. Yeah. It's fucking oh, it was awesome. So good. Yeah. So was, we 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 settled it. It's the N64. I think so. Yeah. But I mean, for racing <laughs> games, it wasn't the best. Is you're you're just boring. All you want to it's <laughs> The racing games? I'm just saying it wasn't the best for racing games because you couldn't have Gran Turismo on it, but for like fun, it was for probably racing the best. Games, the newest one is always. <laughs> if you wanted to have a good time and friends, True. Nintendo 64 was the best one. But if you wanted to sit by yourself in your if bedroom, you want to shave tenth, if, if you were yeah. an unshaven recluse, then in, in yes. hatchback front wheel drive class five license, and you can't play class four until you get the class five right. license, yeah. which not, is basically like homework. I'm not saying that freshman year of college, when you know you have on your dorm, you have like a whiteboard on your door on dorm, you're like, I'm not here right now. Blah, 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 or something stupid. I'm not saying that I had my time on the Nurburgring in Gran Turismo <laughs> 3 listed on there, and I, yeah. but I might have. Have you been laid ever yet? <laughs> time to be. When am I? 32? Yeah. 
I'll get back to you. Was your RA like, Mr. Akulski? <laughs> Mr. Akul, are no. you in? Are you in Flaunt's Garden yet, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I'm at Flaunt's Garden. Sir. I'm at Flaunt's Garden. <laughs> it's very intense. Oh. Oh. Uh, cars. What, okay. a, what about them? There's a Corvette thing happening tomorrow. That's the this rumor. show is not going to age well because whatever we say here might be bad. That's and true. Tomorrow might be invalid. I, so two engines. Definitely two engines. At the si- right? simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. There's one in the front, one in the back. <laughs> like the um, Mosler Twin Star. Yeah. Yes, like a Twin Star. Yeah. Um, it's gonna have. Uh, I don't know. Zach, what's happening in the fucking comments someone, section? You're like really in. Someone asked debate. why we're not on Stitcher anymore. So I'm explaining. We're not on Stitcher anymore because Stitcher puts their own ads on your show and then doesn't tell you about it Oof. and then doesn't pay you for it. Shame on you, Stitcher. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Too bad Stitcher won't hear this. <laughs> they, they won't anymore. They yeah, won't that's anymore. True. We sent a fucking cease and desist. The fuck out of here. Good. Uh, Good. But yeah, so it's tomorrow in Orange County somewhere. It's like a big, uh, re- big reveal. Yeah. There, there's pictures on... I saw someone send me a picture and people have been saying it's at a big like hangar and there's like Corvette logos on the outside of it. That sounds like El Toro, probably. That's the kind of place they would do that. Maybe. Right? Mm-hmm. Very, it's a very top gear thing. I honestly haven't looked at where it is on the invite or I don't the think address. it really matters. Yeah. But mid-engine, finally. looks. Can you get the prototype picture up, Zach? Are you we are we excited? I think we're, I'm I'm kind of excited. It'll be very interesting. I'm um cautiously optimistic. I'm my main my main question is why. You know, it's um everything was working so well the way they had it. I love the Grand Sport, the um ZR1 is magnificent. Uh why this why now? I I'll take a swing at that. Yeah, hit me. I drove the ZR1 and I was like all right, we've pretty much hit the end of just add, adding power to this fucking thing. I thought the ZR1 was a little too much for my taste. That's, it was also the 2019 Road and Track Performance Car of the Year. That's cool. Yeah. But, but like, I think, isn't value factored into that a lot in lap time versus money? Isn't that a lot of... I mean... It can be. It can be. Is it your main competitive in racing? Because, like... You know, Porsche in the, what, GT3 classes, like, they've moved the engine forward a lot yeah. to a point where it's basically mid-engine. It is mid-engine. It is mid-engine. Yeah, yeah. it's mid-engine even though it's a rear-engine car. So, Corvette is re- is very competitive in that series and has been for a long time with Pratt and Miller. Pratt and Miller. Yeah, yeah, like, they kill it, but at a certain point, you can't overcome physics, but, right? Well, the, th- the thing about Porsche was they didn't move the engine to improve the weight balance. They were actually really happy with how the car was handling, but um, what they needed to do was control the airflow, so they needed um, more surface area under the rear of the car. Oh, they need more diffuser, um, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. they yeah. needed more diffuser, mm. so they had to move the engine to facilitate the aerodynamics. It wasn't that, you know, y- there, there are inherent advantages to having the engine in the back uh, as far as traction goes but it was just aerodynamic so I don't know I'm not I'm not necessarily convinced and I guess we'll find out more so maybe this comment will age poorly but I'm not necessarily convinced based on their racing results um, and the way the ZR1 was that moving it moving that engine backward was necessary to increase the performance of the car for the next generation but so I guess we'll find out I spoke to years ago when the Z06 came out I spoke to Taj Tucker yeah. who's the chief engineer and he was saying that they with even with the Z06 they had essentially were at the limit of what a front engine platform could do didn't say they were going to make a mid-engine car but obviously now they are and uh, I think that is probably a big part of it I mean they couldn't hook up with the Z06 and yeah. the ZR1 doesn't hook up very well either. I mean, even with Sport Cup 2s. Yeah. So I, I think that's a big part of it. But it'll be very interesting to see how they maintain Corvettiness. <laughs> that will true. come from the quality of the body panels <laughs> and the paint. Well, and <laughs> well, the other, but, but the other thing is like Corvette is a great Grand Touring car. It's got tons of luggage space. You can yeah. take the roof off, all that sort of stuff. So it'll be really interesting to see if they're able to maintain that sort of thing. Yeah, they're going to struggle with trunk space, although it, go back to that picture you just had. I mean, that could be, a, I think that's a wide angle lens, but it looks like they have they have made the effort to have a pretty big schnoz on there. Big frunk? Yeah, which big could frunk. give you a pretty big frunk, I yeah. think. Um, and there might be some room behind the seats, too. But like, but is, like, is any of the magic dulled um, now that it's kind of more exotic looking in mid-engine and some guy who's dreaming of this car that lives in Kentucky is going to have to go like, yeah, man, I can't fit my golf clubs in the frunk. 
Like, do you pair that accent with golf and Kentucky? I, yeah, I where, don't, where? Listen, that is it's, that's not it's what Mark tr- Baruch sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, I mean, I <laughs> if they can't fit golf clubs in there, that's that is a problem. Yeah, that they need that. They, I mean, they'll be able to fit. I mean, come on, I it's hope, a Corvette. I hope so. They've got to be. I hope it. so. They've figured it out, but. Um, I think they they're running out of traction issues. You just you can't keep throwing more power yeah. on it, and especially if you want that low low cowl, yep. they're running out of air places to get air in a, to cool it too. Yeah, and so if you get side pods and a frontal area now, you can you know get more power. And the ZR1 is kind of a cartoon car. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like a lot of a car, like a GT2 RS. It's like, like a it character like of a Shredder's Corvette. Shredder's helmet, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's super cool, but it's also <laughs> at a certain point, this is a bit much. Well, this is the result of like every year, every time a new car comes out, it has to be faster than the last one and try to beat the competition, right? So if they if they stuck stuck with the front engine format and let other cars get slightly faster in cornering and acceleration and everything, and they're like, nope, we like this, it looks cool, it works fine, like, no one needs to go faster, which is true. They would, we would, journalists would go, why is it slower? Why isn't this, you know, keeping up with the time? So it's like, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Right, I mean, they really don't have a choice. Yeah. I mean, and it's just amazing that there's been 50 years of, you know, people saying that this is coming imminently it'll be here next year it'll be how here many next year. i saw i did see uh that motor, motor trend, trend put an article up it saying like we've nine put, times <laughs> mid-engine corvettes on the cover nine times which is really funny it's great i mean we've Road all track has a couple times at least as well car and driver was particularly offensive at had the number of times they've yeah, done it i don't yeah. know the number of times we've done it specifically um but i know that have we ever had a mid-engine oh man the we one on the right I, the, the, the yellow one i cover? definitely have at my house with that, <laughs> Do we, we might have put thing. the Corvette Indy on a cover at some point. The Indy, that was the yeah. blue one, right? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. thing was pretty cool. Yeah. Did that car drive? Did it work? Yeah. 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 I think there was a test, right? Yeah, there was like that. And Man. what was the old, what was the Oldsmobile from around the same time? The, the Aerotech. Aero yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. How, that thing. how awesome would that be? Can we? Who can we call to get that to Radwood? I'd love to roll up in the fucking Aerotech. Call like Ed Welburn or something. (laughs) Look at that. That thing went like, what did it go, 240 something miles an hour? Didn't AJ Foyt drive it? God damn, is that hot. (laughs) And look at the not, are those sticker headlights? If they are, they look an awful lot like a Veyron. I was going to say that. The Veyron um, front came from somewhere. God damn, is that thing cool looking? That is a cool thing. It's like the Speedtail, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, it is like the Speedtail. What do you think it costs to build that windshield? Oh, back then, uh, that was plexiglass probably back then. Got to be a hundred grand. If it was yeah, glass, f- yes. Glickenhaus told me that the windshield for the P45 was four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's certainly cost effective. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you collect a rock, <laughs> <laughs> it better have been a damn good rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about P45 and the uh, Di Tommaso? You know, that uh, Glick has been talking about. I think I think he's got a point. You know, <laughs> I, you I, know, I hate to say it, but it's because it's kind of like rich people problems. Like I don't really yeah. give a shit. But I like, no, but did, I saw the I saw the new Pin and Farina thing at Goodwood. Yeah, and um, I guess they were vaguely sim- similar. But I it's the P seventy two aesthetically. I'm not really into either of them. I don't I don't know what the fuss. The is. The P four five isn't a pretty car. It's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. This is like so cartoony. Like yeah. that's out of like F zero. Like mm-hmm. this looks Good like point. the PlayStation rendering we were talking. Like this <laughs> yeah. looks like Gran Turismo. Yeah, it, it it's r- just not real looking in real life. I think the P four five is better looking. This is just it, th- if this was stretched a bit. I don't know. It's very bulbous. It's not super sure. fucking bulbous. <laughs> it's, yeah, but like it, everything forward penis. of the windshield looks a lot like P four five. The windshield canopy itself yeah. looks a lot like P four five. Yeah. I don't know. Jim's got a point, I think. I hate to say it. I don't hate to say it. He's eh. got a point. <laughs> he does. I like to say it, actually. And, and Jason Castriota, who designed that at, is going to come on the show uh, later this year. He's working at Ford now. Is this, he really? I thought he, really. he, yeah. he just finished the, the SSC. And he finished the SSC. He said, I can drive it for your magazine, by the way. He also said Camisa could drive it for the Fuck out of here. Yeah. I thought I was going to drive it for the magazine. I, I mean, was told I could drive it for the magazine. He probably wants everyone to drive it for the magazine. Man, yeah. that's going to be a weird issue. I told yeah. him I'll drive it for the magazine, <laughs> but I don't want to do a conceptual issue where everyone just drives the same 84 car. 84 edit pages <laughs> of everyone doing, it'll be what Sam if everyone, on some Everyone wacky, reviews the same car yeah. and no one reads each other's drafts. 
laughs and we all see what somebody said. I we actually think, think that could be kind that of could funny. Be interesting. We were thinking, we were talking, we, we were should, talking. You should make everyone rent the same car. That way we can just get it easily. Like yeah. every, everyone goes. Well, you can't get well, an SSC. Some SSC. Twatara. Twatara. I can, I suppose, unless <laughs> Jason Teresa gets it first. Uh, the. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say a thing. Oh, we were talking. Sam and I were talking about this and putting like in the magazine instead uh, as part of a review. Like we, a lot of times we have email threads going back and forth of impressions on things. Like we all drive a car and mm -hmm. then one person writes a story just to publish the email thread yeah. at some point, which I think could be a lot of fun because people are a column called the thread. I think would be funny. It would be if funny. It was just That's like a text conversation. Yeah. But it also gets like. When you sit down to write a story, you think a lot about it, right? You're thinking about being writerly and being, you know, artistic and creative or not. Or I whatever. don't. See, you like <laughs> if you're like Zach, then you don't think like that. But if, you know, a lot of times these email threads we have are like stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Like the thread that we, when you did the, when we did the comparison test at uh, Willow. Sam, yeah, that was Sam cool. sent me that thread and he's like, this is awesome. And we were just going back to it the other day because we were talking about something else. And it's like, maybe this is worthwhile to you know do in the future so i think that's something we're going to consider cool yeah sure i like that cool the thread is fun well yeah. it's, it's fun you know being kind of hyperbolic the thread with himself yeah i was gonna say you have to cut <laughs> sam's parts down sam's a lot. entire <laughs> life is a thread with himself it's uh it's just uh it's a feedback loop. kyle 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 yeah. kyle kyle exactly. kyle that's it <laughs> that's very good <laughs> <laughs> yo yo can you tell me all about the mclaren f1 Fucking LM. Oh. Uh, it was a GT. LM, well, F1 it was an GT. F1, F1 GTR, bro. Um, yeah, that, that was, was a that was to, to jelly. That was a day, I man. Was to jelly. I um. Great description. I uh. If you go, there's a there's a photo on my Instagram. What's your Instagram? Uh, there it is. Tikolsky. Yeah. The Lord Fina. Dogs. So yeah. It's, the Fina uh, joint on the right there. Yeah. So every year before the uh, Monterey Historics, uh, BMW runs a test day for all their old cars and if you are i guess racing license and you have a pitch and a place to place it they will consider letting you do something so last year uh we went and i drove the m3 gtr the v8 car with the you know six speed that ran at alms for a few years and that car is amazing like incredible right so we were thinking like what can we do in the future and so this is sam and i talking and I mean, they have an F1 GTR. Yeah, so well, that's the game over, isn't it? So the original, <laughs> the original idea was not for us to necessarily drive it. That was not the original pitch. The original pitch was to get Bill Oberlin into that in a McLaren Senna, mm. and we would talk about how these cars have changed from the same manufacturer over that amount of time. And since Sam was writing the story, the idea was, hey, can he get a couple laps in the car? And BMW said, yes, he can. So which, then, which license do you two have? I just wanted for the audience. I have an SCCA club license. Okay. I think Sam is the same thing. Oh, okay. Have the, or he might have. I think he has FIA, doesn't he? Because he drove the F1 car? That does. You didn't need a license yeah, for that. Oh, he did a privately yeah. owned yeah. car okay. to test. Yeah. It. So um, he, he just lied about the license instead. Yeah, he said he had an FIA super license and yeah. then he won. I don't know Silverstone and you know 2004, but that. I look that, at me. I am Alonzo now. <laughs> That's what he said, and it just it worked. It worked. Yeah, he cracked a walnut with his neck, and that was yeah. it. So we had we had a few ideas for this, and that was the one that stuck because we only had a limited amount of time. So I then we were all going. So decided to make a video and do a written story. Sam would do the written story. I would do the video with the car. Um, usually this test is at Mid-Ohio. This year it was at Pit Race, which is outside Pittsburgh. It's a track I've never been to before, and my first lap on that track was in a Senna, which is... Uh, so we had a Senna. We brought the Senna, too. So we did both cars for the next, not September, the October issue. Um, so, I mean, a Senna, first off, on a track. I never... I can, uh, at, uh, a Port's Senna car, on a track you've never driven is a little crazy. Right. And I'd never driven a Senna on track either, because we mm. had the Senna for performance car of the year last year, but it rained so much that we didn't... Ever, not everyone got to drive it on track. And I, because I wasn't setting the times or anything, I didn't get to drive it. So, first lap out, fourth gear, totally sideways on a straightaway <laughs> in that car on a track I don't know. And I'm recording video, too, which went great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it is a... It turns a, out, driving fast and talking is hard. It's very hard. Turns yeah. out. It's an, it means an intimidating track. It's a lot of blind 
corners. Like every corner is blind. There's Ugh, blind crests. So you get fucking kind of, hate when they do that. So you get kind of lost. Gimmicky shit. <laughs> I hate when they do it on golf courses, and I hate when they do it on fucking racetracks. Hey man, Herman Tilka's got to earn a few bucks here and there. <laughs> it is it, is, it, is it a Tilka track? I don't know. Is I, just, I, know, I, just, I just assume he does track. every track now. Um, but it's. So I had to learn the track. I, for, well, I tried to learn a track in an M2, but Bill Arberlin took me out in it, and he drove like he did not want to be out there with anybody in the car anymore. So he drove as fast as he could for a lap and a half, and then just pitted and said, "Okay, you go." So I went out for like two laps to learn it, but it's long, and I figured we don't have enough time. So I got out in the Senna, I did that. But the F1 is, you'd think it'd be super intimidating. Uh, clutch is light, gearbox is direct, um, steering's heavy, manual steering, yeah. but direct and at speed you just get used to it and like i had to i I couldn't the entire time i was doing it before i did it while i was doing it and after i had done it i can't i couldn't believe what i was doing yeah right i've got a car here that's been sitting on my i I have a shelf of model cars and i have a a road f1 on there for years i thought was the closest i was ever going to get to this car but you know trying to drive something like this that's like a it felt like a road car it was the most road car a race car has ever felt to me i mean it was compliant it was uh, it was approachable it was it encouraged you to go faster i maybe went six tenths because it was also a 25 million dollar yeah. car but the sound is incredible the induction is right over your head so you get the whole the whole orchestra inside the car outside it sounds even better but yeah there's you know, some i think is it your car your instagram or sam does a couple I, drive sam, sam has it on his um but i also there's also on the the RNT account, but Sam's has one of interior, I think, of him it's driving. Fucking crazy sounding. Yeah. It sounds awesome. But Sam knew the track too. So when Sam went out, he was on it and it sounded so good. And then it just made me mad that I couldn't learn the track and something and then yeah. get back out there. But the only that thing happens I mean, too when you're like when we get sent on press launches and yeah. it's like, oh you like oh you're going to Europe and you get seven laps in this eight hundred horsepower thing and you've yeah. never been in this track <sighs> before like like it's, it's cool, but like it it's not the worst, but like it's you don't want to fucking crash the thing, you don't know where you're going. It's hard. Oh well how do you not love that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean there's a couple times it was I missed the shift a couple times down yeah. shifting. Like accidentally I would mix up that is the video. Is this the in car? Yes. Oh. That's Sam? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's doing good. It was so uh, <laughs> fast. That's shit. Oh, Ooh, that's blind over left. Exactly. Yeah, yeah and then you know, down into that left hand. Having knowledge of that would help. The real disconcerting thing with driving it is you don't drive anything sitting, like a road car sitting in the middle, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm used to, I mean, I've, I've raced a bunch. I know that I, I'm very, I'm very talented. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, like when, you, when all, you're, folks, uh, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're tracking out on the, out of a right hand corner you're going to put yourself as far to the left of the track as you can, right? You're going to you're going to be on the rumble strips or you're going to be all the way track out if you're going somewhere straight. In this car if you do that, you've got half the car in the dirt yeah. and you got a real problem. So that took a few laps to get used to. Did you race carts? Yeah. You said in the middle of those? Yeah, but they're Just open, checking. Yeah, but open wheel. You know, right, so you can a, see the wheels in a, in a car is different. I drove. Yeah, I actually drove. Uh, I drove. Hey, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you are talking you? about here? Yeah, is that no, a, that's a good point? Is where's Spinelli? Is that Spinelli? Is Spinelli? Spinelli's Spinelli, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I drove hey, Busy Moto's right uh, center seat came boxer. Did you see that thing? Yeah, you wrote about it. For I know. Us. I wrote about it yeah. for you. But oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Wow. But, um, I never mean, saw it. But it's it. But it. But I thought I was going to have that same issue. I ended up not having it. I ended up being not so hard to mentally it was it was like a it was it was like two laps of it of that right but oh, the, yeah, i did look at that i did write about it for you yeah the the car is it was it has no traction control it has a synchro gearbox so you have to use a clutch it's not a dog box it's so it's like literally like driving a road car but it's like driving a car in f1 on slicks yeah i imagine if I've never driven how a road did, one. How did the 2001 that you drove, uh, not McLaren F1, the M3 race car, because like Steve Dynan, when he talks about race cars, he talks about compliance. You want them to be easy to drive because the less work you have to do as a driver, yeah. the more energy you'll have, like the longer the endurance racing is easier. Mm-hmm. You just want the car to like talk to you a little bit, but not be difficult, right? which is a, a mistake tuners and, and private people when they build their cars think like build it stiffer, stiffer, stiffer. That's more race car. So how did like the 01 compare? I think I was instantly more comfortable in the M3 GTR for a few reasons. One, um, it feels a little more normal. It felt more, it wasn't, it didn't, I mean, 
it felt special, but it also felt like familiar, familiar like race car, yeah. right? The um, I knew the track. I drove that at Mid Ohio, and I know Mid Ohio pretty well. Um, Knowing the track gets you a long yeah, way. It's a lot of there's a lot of confidence. If you're if you're trying to think about valuable car, doing a video, what am I going to say? Car and oh yeah. by the way, a really fast valuable car and oh by the way, I don't even know where I'm going. That's that's you know it's like the hundred points of adhesion. Mm -hmm. You get a hundred points of brain power. Talking takes up thirty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. So, but driving like the and the M3 felt like every race car I've ever been in before. It just it was communicative. It wasn't overly manic. And I think that the for me the F1 because I didn't go that fast was gentle. But from what I've heard from other people who have driven them, which is not many people but the um the f when you start to get up to the limit that thing will bite and you don't want to get bit by it because there's not really any coming back from it so i was very cognizant of all of financially these financially as well right <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i it's something that is worth more than all the money i will make in my entire life and times I was, about 10 yeah, i imagine yeah oh, at least whereas i mean the m3 Pretty much the same thing, but especially knowing the track and all that sort of stuff made it way easier to go fast. Plus, the M3 spit a lot of fire, which was really yeah. cool. Yeah, that car was good. That was rad. That was a really rad day. It was. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. How do I? How do I get these race car gigs? What do I do? Got to have a pitch, man. That's it. That's. What, I mean, we've talked mm. about this all. Uh, like for that. Do I pitch you or do I pitch the manufacturer? Well, if you want, you have to a little bit of both. Okay. Got it. Yeah. But that car, man. I, I want to drive one of those fucking F forty race cars so bad. Like that, that, that. That's the one. Uh, that ninety five. That'd, like uh, that'd be totally not terrible. Was there a yeah. race where an F forty and a McLaren F one were in the same race? I don't think. I so. I feel like some privateers raced F forties well past where they stopped making them, and I, if I recall, there was at least one race. Not like the 24 Hours of Le Mans, yeah. but like some kind of WEC race or whatever it was called back then, yeah. where there was an F40 and an F1 in the same race. I feel I think like it I happened. I feel like the F1 would have beaten it. Thousand <laughs> <laughs> Look at that livery. Hell yeah. yeah. That is a fucking perfect shell 80s livery. Oh man, the new scooter when I get it is going to have the <laughs> sickest. It's no Mototron livery. Mototron the, uh, is the jam, money, money tron. Money, money tron. It's no, tron. But that could be your you could put it's Mototron, no mototron. On it instead of money tron and that could be your your motor. This is very this is kind of dull. I think it's kind of dull. It's like uh the top half of the car is white. We put a shell logo on the hood, and then we put the shell colors on the side. Let's go home. It's fine. Uh, it's, it's fine. It's, it's good. Uh. It's optimal. Uh, we have a lunch in an hour. What do you want to do? For uh, livery, we do a uh, three color. For livery, <laughs> <laughs> I drink a grappa, yeah. a you paint, uh, and then a smoke break. You leave it. We have an espresso and a nap. And What's wrong back. with the red from the factory? Well, our corporate colors at Shell are yellow and orange. Yeah, then but you it's handle. not the pretty. <laughs> you handle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Maybe that's what they did. They then, gave uh, the shell guys a paint and they're like, I go up? with uh, Tortellini and Brodo. You uh, drive car. Oh. Terry, I don't know how to paint. <laughs> 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 yeah, just draw uh, three lines on there. Call it a day. Neither do I, Bill. So let's just uh, put the logo on the hood and go home. Oh, my oh. God. We are so fired. Did you see, uh, f you know, Freddy is fucking rebuilding that beat ass Mercy from Fast and yeah, Furious yeah. 8. Oh. And he found, like, some module that's you know that that had never been taken apart before from the factory that like from the factory was like electrical taped to the back of the dashboard. It was yeah, amazing. but it's Italian electrical tape, so yes. it's got soul. Oh it man, soulful electrical yeah. tape. They know. They're the middle right. Zach. See, that, that's fa oh, oh my factory. Gosh. <laughs> Is fine. Uh, <laughs> this is a mount for the GPS antenna. Yeah. It did not have a bracket. It was, Jesus, it was just secured with tape. <laughs> okay, but to be 10 fair. 10 pieces of tape holding it. It still held. Yeah, it's there. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know? Uh, Damn it, you're lighter, right. Lighter weight, uh, low effort. It, um, you can do it when you're drunk on grappa. Um, you can it's chain, good enough. You uh, can chain smoke with one hand while you're applying the tape. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, infallible, <laughs> essentially. Tony, did you oh. figure out that bracket problem? See. <laughs> Great. Well, how, how'd you solve it? Don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, are you sending anyone to drive the Storado, speaking of Lambos? The uh, this Lambo safari car? No Does one's anyone? invited oh. us to drive the Storado. Okay, if I, if I ask them, yeah, 
Johnny went to go drive it. Apparently, it's a it's a it's a Huracan Safari car. Look, okay, it's not I've really seen that the, lifted. The thing, but like apparently you can mob on dirt. Ah. As the resident safari car guy, I think I mean, you really can tell us me. if it's actually a safari car. I think it needs to be two or three inches taller, with smaller wheels and more balloony tires. That's just my personal opinion. But an external roll cage. <laughs> That don't I, I no comment no <laughs> comment on the external roll cage it needs a bit, needs a, more lights it could yeah. use some more more yeah. bigger like lights yeah, more it, lights. Need, it just needs like uh, what are the ones from Back to the Future on the t- on the, on the Toyota KC, KC. Oh, it needs KC. a bunch of KC yeah, lights yeah, yeah. someone yeah. Um, uh, Chevy is selling a package for the the ZR2 Colorado that makes it look just like the Back to the Future truck it's awesome Toyota should sell a package like that. Not I for the think ZR2. they no, they did for a second, or was it a SEMA build or something? Might I have saw. Been. I think it was. It was amazing looking. If I would, oh, if I wanted a truck, I would definitely do that shit. Yeah, fucking new, nouveau, Back to the Future. Well, your yeah. Delica can. Uh, it could. You could get some lights on that. It has lights on. I don't think I can. I don't think I'd want to do a Back to the Future tribute livery. <laughs> well, you'd be. You'd certainly be the only one. <laughs> I saw a Jurassic Park Jeep yesterday, and it made me fucking laugh so hard. Yeah, yeah. it was great. That is. That People in L.A., just drive around the alleys of Venice. You will see the fucking weirdest cars. On the way here, yeah. we were sitting in a right-hand <laughs> turn lane, and an E30 M3 oh, yeah. with like an Evo 2 wing and some livery came by us, and we almost got out of the lane to chase the guy down, but then yeah. he cut everybody off and went away, and we were yeah, in a blazer. He, it and was we some weird catch wave up cancellation, because like, one, it's a guy in an Alpine E30 M3 with some crazy livery on it. Uh, two, he cut off about 50 people in one of the most <laughs> asshole maneuvers I've ever seen conducted in L.A. So He uh, was driving a BMW. <laughs> He's awesome how, and driving how a BMW. How dare you? I mean, I do. I, I do that. I do that with my yeah, with my car now. Yeah. Yeah. I bought a BMW. What kind of BMW? What'd you buy? I bought a 330i ZHP. Oh, did oh, that's you? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, those are nice. They're good. It is really nice. It's only got seventy five thousand miles on it. Okay. To two thousand three. It's a cloth interior. Oh, there it is. Nice. Cloth is great. Someone yeah. just asked us what yeah. my favorite cloth was. BMWs. That it. That's yep. it right there. Cloth that interior. That cloth has no awesome. sunroof. It's good option. It was o- it was owned by BMW originally, so it was either so it was a press, press it was either a press car or a marketing car. <laughs> it's gonna have a short life. Oh, it's yeah. a sedan. It is a sedan. Oh, it's that's great. Yeah, good was car. It, was it I'm, cheap? No, <laughs> it was expensive. I bought it on Bring a Trailer. Oh, so it was you premium. paid the full. I tax. paid I paid the price for How the much car. Was it? it was thirteen. That's not that bad. Act for, for I mean, it, it's the going bad. it's going rate for that mileage yeah. with uh, on brick and trail. How many mi- how many miles are on it? Seventy five. That's oh, fine. All right, thousand cool. seventy five thousand. I should specify, not just seventy five. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. That's uh, fine. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, but it's, it'll it's, be nice. It's a good car. I dri- my daily driver now. Yeah, yeah that's a good have, daily. So that's I don't cool. need press cars all the time. But how do you feel about the fact that that five forty i M Sport with the six speed went for sixty two hundred bucks yesterday? Dude, the, I w- I was thinking of one <laughs> yeah. of those originally. Was it sixty two hundred? Was that the I number? Know, I yeah, but it ha- it was a Canadian car. It had like a hundred thousand miles on it. If you don't have the timing chain done on those things, yeah, they, they will. They you will buy another car. I know. <laughs> and those they were also all driven to the ground no matter how much mileage is on people who buy a car like that are not driving it just to be you know to putter around town. <laughs> then again people who buy a 330 zhp those yeah, are not just puttering around customers all grandmothers but the m54 <laughs> the m54 is more reliable than the whatever was in the, the m62 M62. M62. yeah the m62 my uh my friend nick steinman had a, Z, a zhp when i first met him and he, he has a gt3 rs now and that's oh. not a nice upgrade okay. but I think I those are say, be- I, those are better cars. I would say that wow, those seats, Zach. I want them. I would say that he oh, we're selling beat seats the on BID. absolute balls off that ZHP until it was falling apart, and I think a lot of other people did too. So if you have one that wasn't beat, that's the thing. Lucky. Every ZHP I saw, was trash, I wasn't even right? looking for one, but I would occasionally just look. They all had about one hundred eighty thousand miles on them and looked like if they moved anymore, <laughs> all the wheels would fall off. They were hard to find when I when I bought my car. I was looking at like a silver one, silver coupe, and it yeah. was just. I think the price they were asking was too close to the M3 price. It was like really, really clean, and everyone's like, "Well, it's kind of knocking on the door of, you know, a yeah. hundred more horsepower." Yeah. That's the well, that is the the thing now is I have a hundred fewer horsepower. Um, How many more M3s do you think they made than ZHPs though? 
probably it, it a must lot. Have made a bunch. Threes, right? By like a yeah, well, but, but CHP better, was only, better, better CHP car was beats lower numbers usually. Yeah, <laughs> CHP's good though. ZHP right? no, was a, good. Is a two, good car. ZHP is a two-year package, three-year package. It was yeah. 2003 or 2005. Yeah. M3s were for what 2002, two to six, two to six. Two to six yeah. Um, I mean, frankly, if I could have found an M3 with lower mileage that was the same price as this car, I would have taken it. But it was. The, the trade-off was, I, I prefer lower mileage. I really like this car. I wanted a sedan, and you couldn't get an M3 in a sedan, obviously. Yeah, no, that's a cool car. So I'm There's really, an 08 happy with it. M3 sedan on Bring a Trailer right now that I really like. Yeah. It's very nice. Oh, wait, so the, ba- the oh, eights are the ones that have the uh, rod bearing. Oh, is the, that the, the, big, r- the bad rod bearing mm. problem? And that one did not have it replaced, I think. Oh, I so you got to do a it. fucking engine out. Yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, I learned way too much about BMW shit while I was researching this stuff. You're a BMW man, I I don't want to be. It's okay. You did all your research. Nothing will go go wrong with yours. Oh no, of course (laughs) not. No, not at all. No, the uh, you know the air conditioning didn't stop working after I picked up the car in Chicago. (laughs) Definitely not. And the uh, brakes weren't the the rotors weren't glazed either. No, and it didn't need new tires. No, and the but in, now it's fine. And the tires uh, rear, different the rear drop. Well, yeah, tr- tires are a thing, right? Dude, I needed a full engine rebuild <laughs> three weeks after getting my car back from a full safari build. Uh, yeah, that's that's so. I didn't wah, get the wah. safari build done on the car yet. So you should. Uh, we but, safari oh, an E30, yeah. and it was the shit. It was. That was good. Who's oh yeah, I watched the, the, the yeah the video. Just like oh, HD yeah. shocks yeah. and BFG KOs. It was, was yeah. awesome. It was so yeah. durable and fun. I feel like my wife would not like that if I you did. You sure? That. She might. Yeah. Nah, you got a good car. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I'm, I'm, good I'm, daily. I'm pleased with it. So. Good. Borat's and we still drove. Funny, we right? drove. Yeah. What's his face? Is uh. Spec E46, and that wasn't an M3. It, oh, so, like, power was, was 240, great. but, dude, that was, it just it was drove so good. It was a 330 uh, CI. That's what it was. With, like, Turner stuff on it. It yeah. was a Spec E46 race car. So fun. Yeah. So fun. I haven't run an E46. I've, all, all, the, only, the only E46 race car I've driven is the uh, M3 GTR. <laughs> the one with the <laughs> but, V8. But the um, I've driven E36s and E30s, and they're just great. On they're the track. fun. Yeah, they're yeah. fun. Super fun. Easy to drive. That same car we fucking turned into a Safari E30. We raced to the 25 four hours of VIR. That's great. Mm. It was the same car. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. It was awesome. Hey, throw, I want these seats. Jesus. Throw your uh, questions in the super chat if you want them. We're going to close it down in the next five minutes. And I want those rainbow seats very badly, Zachary. Sam has a set of those. Does he really? Yeah. He's uh, in the rainbow? They sat in, my, um, they sat in my cubicle in Ann Arbor for like a year. And then uh, somebody came by and spilled coffee on him. And then oh, Sam, I, I can't remember how we got those back to him, but they are perfect. Yeah. What's hmm. your do? You, what's your what's your daily driver, or, uh, or your most interesting? My, uh, do you have a, a collection? I, you know, like a true automotive journalist, I've kind of spewed my my cars across the country, but I don't have one in New York City. I've got an XJR that was a hand me down from Sam in Ann Arbor and then my in-laws have my... Oh, you have, have my, that uh, XJR? Yeah, that's my, that's my <laughs> that's problem. Now you can the, see ti- that. the title, the, is. the untitled $1 the XJR? The untitled California $0 XJR and then my in-laws have my uh, NA Miata. Okay, yeah, that's some, that's some journalist options. Yeah, you're uh, only like, you're close, to, you're almost Spinelli. I mean, well, Spinelli's I, right there too. Yeah. Right before I moved, I sold my FCRX7, so I had like the trifecta uh, of just... Yeah. <laughs> Well, the Miata's reliable, but everything else, um, not. Not at all. We recently discovered that everybody on the R&T staff has owned a Miata within the last few years except for one person. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. Either owns currently or has owned. It's your perfect staff. You have staffed correctly, Travis. It's kind of yeah. crazy. <laughs> it's kind of crazy to it realize. It was nice to read through the last issue and see like all my friends' names on the bylines. Yeah. I, was, I was like, oh, this is fucking a great place to be right now. Yeah. So this is really cool. It's real fun. It's fun. Yeah, it's we're having, awesome. it's a good time. And I mean- I, I I don't even have the words. It's just it's so much it's so much fun to put it together, and it's you know we've got a lot of good stuff coming, and I think that you know when we do the road and truck issue and the adventure issue and P, yeah. P- Cody's going to be its road own and issue. truck. I like that. Yeah, people are I going gotta, to. Are you accepting truck submission still, or is that yeah. the closed issue? Yeah, if you have something, I have something. Okay. Can, can I tell you now? Sure. sure. Let's, well, let's to the do, moon. do you want to usurp somebody out there that might uh, be pitching the same thing? Well, I don't know. I have I have access. I can. Ooh. I got the 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 new Hennessy Goliath six by. It's the the we Chevy that, six by six. Oh yeah, we got that today too. Did you? Yeah, we got that's, an email about that's it. Weird. You yeah. got an email about it? Yeah. Well, I have like the keys to the truck at my house. 
Wait, the, really? Yeah. It's at your house? Because Vinny's working with him, and Vinny's living in my house, and the co- truck's in Costa Mesa. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he, he called me. He's like, hey, who do you know that can fit a six by six? Yeah. And, I was, and I just, it was a long silence. It's not, he, goes, I go, I, he goes, dude, John's sending the six by. I go, to where? <laughs> and he yeah. goes, I, it, it might fit in the garage. I go, what the, the garage? My garage? It's the like, whole garage. What exactly? If you turn it on its side, you could probably <laughs> just... Wheel or was he expecting you'd stop construction? I don't, well, <laughs> and actually, park it at, well, uh, I want to bring it over there because I want to test and see if we can get it. Because I got an eight foot two clearance. I want to see if we can do it. Mm. But um, the, I, the basement is not lockable yet. There's the, the gate hasn't been installed. Yeah. You know, I don't think anyone would steal that some. Yeah. 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 No, I, you know, you know. Where can you take that thing that's <laughs> going to disappear? You know? like, <laughs> I don't know. That's what they told me about boats. I, you know, like, you know, most boats over like 30 feet yeah. don't have keys or anything. You just get on the boat and press start. That's it. And the reason is because where the fuck are you going to take you it? You guys want to go steal a boat? It's really easy to steal boats. Stealing boats is by far the easiest thing. You just untie it and fucking start it and drive it away. It's my apocalypse. It's so uh, easy. I know how we're getting apocalypse to the event plan. tomorrow. Haven't you ever yeah. seen like those repo <laughs> boat. shits where they uh, repo boats and they just untie it and tow it away? Is that a show? Yeah. Boat of course it is. Boat repo. <laughs> yeah. Of course it is, Kyle. Repo boats? Everything's boat a show. Repo. Boat repo. It's on, it's on, the, marine, it's on the Marine, it's on marine Network. Don't you watch the Marine Network? Um, yeah. It's O2. Uh, H2O H2O. H2O. Yes. I'm sorry, they rebranded. ESPN 12 Boat Repo. It follows Bass Pro Weekends. Yeah. Oh Fucking God. bass fishing, dude. Um, you ever watch those Nitro Boats? Like the the Formula One boats, like the, the ones drag the racing? ones that go zig and they go, the ones the drag like where racing, they cut the, the canals and like like super sprint boats. No, the cool I'm telling the offshore. really the really the offshore, not the big power boats, but the ones that have like three pontoons and oh, the like hood the, scoop. And yeah, the, like hydrofoil yeah. racing. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah, like yeah. drag boat hydrofoil. They do it on lakes. That shit's nuts. You know who did a lot of that was the guy. Oh, they do have. Yeah, they do. They do loop. Yeah, except you're gonna that you you don't have a there's no good outcome with a crash. Yeah, the two that that's the one crazy. You said about and the other one is the sprint jet boats where they have the oh, canals. That yes. Have you seen yes. that one? Where not where if you crash, like not only are you upside down, you're on land. Yeah. <laughs> on, look, the the Formula One boats are they're smaller. No, it's uh it's hydrofoil or hydrofoil hydrofoil racing. Um, but they're I, those those guys are like doing the yeah like on the stuff. left those, yeah. yeah that guy yeah. oh that's safe like the, yeah. <laughs> the pair of balls you have to fucking have to get into something like that. That is some nutty nutty shit. Well, because this is like driving on a racetrack, and then suddenly j- there's jumps in front of you, or like a, a wind yeah. gust blows, and all of a sudden the tarmac wrinkles. Like, that's do you nuts. think that's more like a boat or a, more like a plane to operate? Probably a plane. I feel like it's probably more like a plane. I you bet gotta, Jarvis is a good driver, though. <laughs> <laughs> Jarvis knows what's up. Yeah, he's got an awesome name. He's really got a good name for hydrofoil. He, he really wants people to know <laughs> who's driving that boat. <laughs> <laughs> that that might be a company though. That might shout out to the folks at Jarvis, your oh, wait, source gotta... for um, Jarvis's. If you... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like this is Jarvis is the driver, and his brother became like a famous doctor, and he's just yelling at his parents. He's like, you know, who's driving the boat? Jarvis, <laughs> not Tom. Jarvis is driving the boat. <laughs> Why would his brother be named Tom? I don't know because it's kind of. <laughs> Tom and Jarvis. Is that like, I didn't is have that, like that long that, to develop that a, a backstory. You went, you went oh no! When Jerry died Jarvis during that. Tom and Jerry, they replaced it with Tom and Jarvis. Is that what happened? <laughs> Oh boy. The spinoff that didn't work later. Um, yeah, Hydrofoil Racing yeah. is crazy. Yeah. All right, so if you want me to answer People any questions, send some money to my Patreon. That looks like an F-18. That that looks like a fighter plane, that one. That's fucking nuts. Oh, boy, Oberto. If I can convince someone, that's oh even crazier. That yeah. one where where you just basically are riding on a <laughs> canoe with a rocket engine on it. That's one that already crashed Jeez. and all the body came yeah. off. The I prop the, is out of the water. That don't, guy's, don't look that behind guy's the curtain. hand is still in the atmosphere from the crash. It's just floating. <laughs> it, it was ejected if, too far. If, have you ever just spent some time looking at hydrofoil and hydroplane crashes on YouTube? <laughs> it's really, really, really gnarly. Uh, that's a subgenre of YouTube. I have not really explored. No, we I'm don't honest. want to explore the <laughs> I mean, deaths of all these boaters. I didn't, we're not looking at. Uh, you you it's, make it's, it so almost, dark. it's almost guaranteed if you're looking no. at one of these, you're looking at a death or an imminent yeah. death. Yeah, you just add the word ejection, and then it gets really, really fun. <laughs> Or, decap- or add decapitation, Ooh. or that's so cool looking. Yeah, I mean, it does make you want to go photograph this type of racing. The plume of water behind them—that's that's, that's smoke. Know, they're both, they're that's both on terrible fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's water everywhere, so it's right. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, water can't burn. 
Can it? That's what it exactly. takes to be the editor of a magazine. Folks. Can a boat catch on fire? <laughs> Can it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it feels good to laugh again. <laughs> Zach, what do the people have? Do the people have anything worth talking Ooh, about today? A lot of questions. What have we? Let's get through a few of these. Oh, boy. 81 Topic says, of drugs in high school. We'll get to that. Okay. Looking to make my NB Miata faster with around a $5,000 budget. Should I do a turbo setup or an Ecotech swap? Turbo. Five grand. I do handling and stuff and make it faster in the corners. Don't worry. You could about probably the, do uh, both, right? Like, five, I mean, five's not that like, much. You five's not used... that much. If you wanted to get a real good suspension and brakes and everything, and then make it as fast as possible through all the corners, I think five grand would do it. And I think that that's probably the better way to go because is a proper a proper turbo setup without a proper way to stop the car is probably not ideal. You know, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna think with the other uh, brain here and just go get a used. Get a used flying setup on the forums. That that'll be way less than five grand. And then turbo, you turbo, or yeah, uh, turbo, or you know, or, just go to your, go to your local junkyard and get an LS. Mm, now we're talking. That's a thing too. Yeah. Those are yeah, never LS. as cheap to put in as people say, though. Are yeah, they? That's like a pain who in the cares ass, what people though. say? Right. Yeah, but if it's an NB, it can be like a shitty five three, and it's still cool. True. You know? Uh, K swap. There's also a K swap. You can yeah. do. Yeah, that seems like such a good idea. That seems like a lot of work. Or yeah, the K swap is apparently pretty good. Yeah, I drove one. It was awesome. There you go. It's really from first first hand, and it's pretty good. Grand? No, I have a video. I don't know if it's five grand, but it's possible. I think it's like fifteen. Five grand. I would do Fly Me Out a turbo setup if if you have already done the supporting mods because Fly Me Out has already figured out how to make it work. An exactly. Ecotech swap seems like. I don't know. Do people Uncharted do that? Is that a thing? I don't know if that's a thing. Well, I don't know. Don't why. make a new thing. Don't, yeah. Yeah. don't ever do a do, new thing. Do for an five old grand. thing. Do, yeah. a, do a good old don't thing. Don't climb Everest for five grand. <laughs> five yeah. G's no. is not new thing money. No. Well, like <laughs> we're, we're, the blocks from the Miata, like the Miata engine was like a six two six, right? It was like a rally. Yeah. It was like a rally engine, so it was it was supposed to be turbocharged, or it was turbocharged in its in its previous life. So they're like and they can they can take they can take some power. It's fine to turbo. I just don't listen to anybody at this table except for me. You want the you want to fly in turbo. Just listen to the guy that, that flipped the grain truck. Yeah. Hey, listen. Yeah. When I, have I was upside down experience. in the truck, I was thinking to myself, in the future, I'm going to have to answer this question, <laughs> and uh, then I screamed. Perfect. Uh, oh, and uh, Carlos would like us to know that, speaking of people on drugs, this is a callback to the lady on drugs outside my house. Wow. Oh, great. Someone kicked his WRX for, quote, idling too loud, <laughs> and while kicking yelled, <laughs> I'm off my meds. And there's been a dent ever since. That's fair. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Shift the intention says, how do I choose who is on the podcast? Uh, well... If you want to be totally honest, I don't take random journalists I don't already know anymore. They have to be personally screened because not everyone is actually good on radio. I mean, I <laughs> I sent Matt an email before coming out here and I said, hey, I'm going to be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would you like to uh, podcast? That's Travis what I Bay. tell all my friends to do. When you're coming to L.A., call me and then we get you on the podcast. And then I have a rotation of 10 or so locals who I, we like the company of. And yeah. then we get some new folks from... PR people or mm -hmm. random emails. It's a bit of a turnoff when people attempt to pitch themselves as guests. I would suggest not doing that. <laughs> Yet you still, you still took us anyway, yeah. which is fantastic. Yeah. Well, I'd like to get hired by you again. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just this is just a pity podcast. Yes. Okay. Read my Million Mile Lexus article. It's it's the the, it's the thing like it's the, the the piece of media that came from that five year project is in the September issue of Road and Track. Yeah. Please justify that five. And years. that artwork that who made oh, that? Man. What's the person's name who made that? Uh, the artist. His name is Tim Tim McDonough. That shit is. First off, Dave Burnett, uh, Poppy Knuckles photos are amazing as expected. Yep. As are the ones with the Sherp, which are the best pictures yeah. ever. Um, but uh, uh, Tim, yeah, Tim took the describe it. So we took um, so our art director's name is Martin Salazar. He has been working with this guy in a bunch of features, and he sent um, he sent him an image of the car. And we have it coming down like a mountain road, but it looks like it's in uh, Japan. And there's the land of the rising sun. So the sun's coming up behind. It actually has your license plate yeah, on the front that. of the car. And then it's got yeah. a real cool, like, rising sun treatment. It's like a million mile Lexus. It is. It's like one of those awesome beautiful. Japanese, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, it's very, pieces it, of art. It's very, like, fractal and kaleidoscopic. It's just like a, it's a super cool graphic image. Yep. I think you should get it tattooed on your face since it's your car. <laughs> it's 
It's I really asked cool. Travis to get me the, a digital file that I'm going to print and frame for my office, yeah. yep. which I'm very yeah, excited about. I, I will do that. Maybe we can do... I don't know how it works with rights and stuff. Maybe we can do a charity poster or something and print some posters and, and donate been, some money to charity. I want to look into happen. that sort of stuff just because we've had a lot of requests for photos and art. So I yeah. think it's, it's something we have to clear with the artist, too. Oh, yeah. Um, Maybe but, there, there could be like a revenue sharing system yeah, or something. But that's something we should figure out because we've got a lot of cool stuff coming and a lot of cool stuff. In it would be cool if you could go to the Road and Track store and like buy images that were used in articles like as artwork in yeah. different size. That would be like a, that'd be a fun to, like side hustle. To have a merch store where you could buy prints and shirts, and, we sure did. And it just kind of yeah, the, the ecom the ecom landscape is a, is a, <laughs> is a fickle mistress. Yeah, and uh, yeah, but I would love to have something too where you do some stuff with the cutaways and with the spec yeah. panels. All you can buy stuff, tufts yeah. of Travis's hair and uh, toenails. That's on my personal and... website. You can still <laughs> okay. That's the Patreon. Those are the yeah. And for my page, if you if you set me up on Patreon yeah. with five to twenty dollars, I will send you a tuft of hair. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Great. Jeff Swart brought me a poster from the original. I think he was a tuft of hair. tuft of his hair. It was a tuft of. Patrick Long's hair, actually, but Ooh, oh, that's it not, was red. Yeah. No, that's Those luxurious. Go, that goes, a, you know, for a lot on the mm. on the uh, tuft of hair black. <laughs> it's like uh, that website Cameo. Like, I don't know about this one. Oh, I, you haven't seen this one yet? No, no and like, I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> Pull it up and let's yeah, see if let's some see famous it. people are on it. Pull it up and look for go and see if rate what kind of racing driver. So basically, they've pitched me a million times. Like, if you're famous, you can set a price for which you will record a personal message for anyone who yeah. pays that price. And some of some people are Gilbert Gottfried? Yeah, there's yeah, fucking no, that's a good. lot of famous people on it. But like see if you can find race car drivers. How much is a Gilbert Gottfried message? Half <laughs> whack. 150 bucks. Kyle, it's uh, me, Gilbert. 150 dollars? What are you yeah. doing? So bad. <laughs> but someone said they got some racing drivers to wish their wife happy birthday or something and it was it was not it was like Juan Pablo Montoya or something. Yeah. It was like two hundred bucks. He Helio Castro Nevis. Yeah, how much there. is Helio? Yeah. How much Ken, to get Helio? Kenny Wallace, Montoya. Yeah, how much, yeah how much to get Juan Pablo Montoya? Uh, 40 bucks. Oh, man. JP, oh, oh. turn your prices up, brother. Man. But, yeah, huh. it was weird. I didn't want to do it. For $40? Right. So weird. <laughs> I mean, we he's got- We could get a well, look. Monaco Grand Prix winner to <laughs> yeah. get him as a personal but greeting for $40? You should get his opinion on stuff. Be like, Doesn't for it cost $40, what's your opinion of the new well, look at this. Yeah. And then just publish He's wearing the same shirt, so it's like he knocked out nine yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't it cost more yeah. to get oh Doug gosh. to sign a photo to yeah. send to you? Who is How your ultimate? How much does he charge for this? I don't I know. I didn't have the balls to look. I don't I don't remember. If you could have any celebrity record a message for you, who would it be? Because me, I would have John Davis do John, my John from Corn from no Mor from Motor, from Motor Week. Week. Oh, John, I'd have him do. I if I could have anything, Singer I would have Korn. my voicemail message be like, "Yeah, this is John Davis. Welcome to Kyle Kennard's cell phone." And then it would just that That's would really be it. Good. Like I would, I would We're pay here anything at, for that. Yeah. <laughs> We're here at Roebling Road Wasteway outside Savannah, Georgia, <laughs> with yeah, Kyle Kennard I, to I, grab this bull by the horns <laughs> and see what it can do. The Camaro asks the Corvette to step, step outside. outside. <laughs> yeah. I have to you say, you guys have watched too much fucking Motor Week. I love Motor Week, and I don't get I do like too. starstruck, but I get nervous around John yeah, Davis. My palms get really sweaty, and he is the nicest guy. That's really. so funny. We did I, a, when I was at Jalop. We do a feature every day at the end of the day. It was called Motor Week Theater, I remember that. where it would be like sarcastically written around Motor Week, and at the beginning it was meant to be sarcastic, and, no, then, and then over it time it became of Motor Week. But then it became like <laughs> I really like Motor Week, and he thanked us for doing that yeah. because it exposed an entire new generation to the show. Oh. Dude, I like, yeah, you know, I grew up great. on watching Barrett Jackson, like so yeah. much Barrett Jackson. And so I found myself actually at a press launch for some like fairly ordinary car. And I get into an elevator and Steve Mignante is in the elevator. Oh. From, and he's just like, he's the nerdiest nerd that has ever talked about cars. He's like, like to hear. he's like, oh, they made, they made three of these in 1967. And you can see because it's got a white chalk yeah. mark on the valve cover here. And this one's highly, and it's like. And I fanboyed out around that guy. Hey, Gary Busey, how much for a Gary Busey message? Busey's doing three fifty. Three fifty for Busey. Wait, oh, man. He's Juan Montoya is one ninth of the price. Of yeah, but you're guaranteed normalness with Montoya, <laughs> whereas you might get some these? real wild this shit. Is for oh my god. Velocity Resource Group. 18th They're all just publicly available. You don't just like get it messaged to them. Like I don't want to be able to see all of them. That's the weirdest thing by Uncle far. Chuck. This is Gary Busey. 
<laughs> happiest of all birthdays you've ever had on oh, July 16th. Oh, no. This Gary. is from Leah, this request. And you have a lot of money. I think that's great. <laughs> oh. You have done it yourself. That's even greater. And that's a great birthday present you're giving yourself by doing that. And also giving others with your degree of giving and Dude, loving. See, Aww, this is why Busey's no. worth the 350. He's going to go into the fucking weeds here. So yeah. a few years ago, I came out here to do a launch, and uh, Glucker and Blake picked me up when we were doing a Hooniverse podcast in a Lexus LS, right? Okay. We're driving up PCH, we're by Neptune's net, and we have a Volvo C30 tailgating us. And he's like weaving in and out, trying to get around us. And finally, there's an opening to get around us. Gary Busey drives a Volvo C30. Mobbing. Gary Busey yeah. is allowed to drive? He's, and he was driving a Volvo C30. <laughs> yeah. This was, this I, was I like six years ago, five or six years ago. But we were all like, holy shit, Charlie. Gary Busey. Wait, who? Charlie, Charlie, Charlie Sheen. Sheen. <laughs> well, Charlie Sheen, that's not surprising. He's got bills to pay, right? Homie. <laughs> he's not getting a lot of work these days. <laughs> what? Crack's well, a hell of an expensive why? habit. Last we heard, he hasn't really settled down on the crack. Um, all right, let's go back. Whoa, let's go oh. back. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. How did we end up there? I don't even know, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what? What? Wonderlay? Wonderlay 13 says, my manager had a Delica and drove it Australia. Drove it all over Australia. Only ever had one a turbo seal fail. Went places even Land Cruisers couldn't go. I've heard a few people say that Delicas are actually better off-roaders than Land Cruisers, which I'm not trying to like argue one versus the other. It just makes me happy. that Did he? Contribute the one 10 I got Australian has, dollars? I mean, just mm -hmm. visually, they nice. look more made for that. I don't know the They're exchange so rate. Awesome. Like, the one I've got has 20,000 miles on it. It's oh. so fresh. Minty Delica. It's minty. Well, Dual Japan's only so big, you can't drive <laughs> <Yeah>. that far. <laughs> <laughs> that was like 50,000 laps of Japan. Yeah. Aaron says, uh, what do Travis and Kyle think of the new M cars? Are they stale compared to the older E46 and 92 generation examples? You want to take this one, BMW boss man? You are also a BMW person. I love the BMWs. Um, I, I here's this is a this here's is a the th here's the thing. The thing. Um. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. So <laughs> they are stale compared. Well, yeah, what, they they what, are they, up to E92, and I mean I've driven E30, E36, E46, lots of, and this has been. They were always in balance, right? There was nothing that overpowered each one, right? The the e, E92 probably got close. It had the most power, but then it had a chassis that could handle all the power. When you get into the F80, right? Is mm -hmm. that the that's the three that's series? That's the turbo ones. Yeah, yeah there the car the the chassis can't handle the power. It doesn't it doesn't work, and I mean it doesn't work on the M3. It works better on the competition. The M4 GTS I think is really good. But Kyle and I were talking about this earlier. It's like we want these cars to be great, and they're not what they used to be. They're more AMG, like old AMG. Yeah. Well, and they're mm. and the, the steering's the, the not. The problem is they either. keep they keep doing like what you said. They keep throwing more power at it. Like we had, uh, we did a test last year uh, that Jack wrote, and it was the M2 Comp and the uh, Camaro uh, V8 One LE, and. You know, everybody was really stoked that they were going to throw the M4 engine into the competition M2, and it turns out that solved none of the car's problems. It actually made the car worse to a degree because it had even more power and it didn't know what to do with it. You know, like the M2 shouldn't be that one. I tend to disagree. The M2, I tend to disagree on. Yeah. Um, I think that that's great. That's a great car. Also, my dad just bought. No, one, I so love. I like the M2. I like the M2 a lot. I love the M2, but you didn't need to throw a. Uh, no, you, you S, didn't. Whatever that is, S sixty, S fifty five, fifty five, yeah. or whatever. It, it just it didn't need the power. But it can handle the power better than the three and the four can, and to a degree better than the, um, what was the gen? What was the V eight ninety two? No, 90. the six, the six series, the the new, the latest M six was whatever uh, generation that is. I don't oh, even yeah. know. I couldn't tell you. But that like that car, eh, the uh, the new five, the new M five is ballistically fast. Yeah, like unbelievably fast. But it doesn't have a lot of the character of the old cars. It's still a very impressive car. It's just not They're what so remember. Big. Yeah, I, I thought mean, it was fun though. I like that there's just that kind of shortcut on the paddles where you can be like bup, and then the traction controls off. The yeah. power's up all the way. Uh, the first like. 20 yards I did in that car were sideways with Rich, uh, Richard Pardon spilling his coffee all over himself because it's just it's like one click away and you can kind of be a maniac it I, is I like so that. fast but it's not true I mean we talk about this stuff all the time and it's like there's certain brands that mean something really like 
mean a lot to us, right? BMW is one of them. Lotus is another. Porsche, all those brands mean so much. And you know, Saturn, Saturn, yeah, uh, yeah. AMC, uh, AMC, <laughs> yeah. Hey, sir. Oh God, oh. Delahaye. But the uh, Delahaye does mean something for crazy Frenchness. Sure, the I don't even know what a Delahaye is. If you t- like, if, you, if I went to Pebble Beach, it's and you like took a point out those just, just find the one that barely looks like a car. Right, it's like a <laughs> yeah. piece of liquid on wheels. That's but, a Delahaye. But like the the BMW thing, like they have always been in balance, and they've always been such a pleasure to drive and it didn't matter if it wasn't the fastest car that was in that class right didn't have to have the most power didn't have to get the 60 the quickest didn't have to have the highest top speed it just had to be the best one to drive and i'm not sure that's the case anymore and i I think we're um you know we all have to a degree a stake in the game right like we love like you were saying we have a great affection for the brand and Mm -hmm. so you know we tend to demand a lot from them and i I think that's fair because they've established this history and reputation and um we just want them to live up to it always right i mean that's the way i feel too about that lotus ev that came out the other day right it you know nothing says lotus like a 3700 pound (laughs) 2.3 million 2,000 horsepower <laughs> electric car. It's basically in a lot. You know right. you want to go drive it. You know, exactly. you're like, well, you know you're like already begging them to go drive I it. I haven't said a word to them, but I would like to drive it, yes. <laughs> but I, I, there's, there's a, you know, Lotus has always stood for lightweight, yeah. simple performance sports cars, and this is not quite that. Right, because eventually, because, I mean, ultimately they need to sell more cars, and like it's an yeah. easier thing for people to, to, to people look at, Mercedes, Audi, BMW, and if Audi and Mercedes are just adding power and straight line speed, and actually, I mean, I drove the new C63 S, the well, I mean, carbon modified, but like it handled great. Like it handled, AMG seems to be moving in the direction that BMW used to be mm-hmm. in. And so they're kind of all meeting in the middle. Like they need to be straight line fast because that's a measurement that your average consumer can understand. Yep. And then they all have to handle pretty well and, you know, steering has to be pretty good. I mean, their, their lap times now are like tenths apart. Like it's really close. It's more about this. I guess like almost a feeling we can't quantify, but have to try to describe. Like, are they are they what we want them to be? It's like, well, they have to be balanced, relatively balanced, but they have to just they're just getting faster and faster and faster. Right. And I mean, it might not be what we want them to be, but we're also not buying them, right? Right. There's the people Lotus thing them. too, I think, because like the Evora that they're about to come out with now is like the end of the old cars, yeah. Because like, now they're going to do a whole new range of cars. I think they're pretty much. I don't think this electric hypercar thing from them really matters. Avi- no, it's Avisha, Avija, Avaya, Avaya, Avija, Avija. It's it's a it's a good way to strongly get strongly vaginal. Fajita. Yeah, it's, it's the fajita. fajita. It's, a, it's, it's a, a lotus fajita. It's a great way to make some money. It's a great way mm-hmm. to build some buzz. I mean, totally. it, it I looks think they're like establishing a, great, a design language really. I and mean, the car is cool. It kind of it's kind of McLaren-y, but it should be pretty cool. It's just not what you think of when you have like the Avora and, yeah. and this, right? And the Avora. The funny thing about that Avora that they're about to come out with, and I was doing like a buy. My, my bi-weekly search for Avoras on eBay. They're the best. So they haven't have, released the, the new one. car. They haven't released a new car yet, and they're not putting a press release out until tomorrow. But there's one for sale on eBay right now of the new car. Of that they're not, so I emailed them. I'm like, hey, blah, 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 can I uh, get the info on this? And they're like, can you wait till Thursday? <laughs> <laughs> and it was already listed. It's though. already there Is for sale. Euro car? No, it's in Florida. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean. I mean, look. The, is this it? That's, That's the it. Avaya. Yeah. Yeah. The the windshield and roof line of it almost looks like the current Avora. I mean, it really does have the silhouette of the Avora right yeah. now. I think yeah. it's very good looking. It is good looking yeah. a lot. It's interesting too. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't fall into making an internal combustion car look like an electric car. There's a lot of interesting things they've done on the design that don't necessarily, like especially the rear end, that don't fall into what you'd expect to see if that were actually like a mid engine car. Right? Yeah, you wouldn't see tunnels like that on a car with exhausts yeah so it's, it's pretty cool looking. yeah except cool for for gt what's well, different because the gt's ex- oh yeah you're right mm-hmm. it's not well, different at all it's exactly the same it looks it. like f-zero again yeah very much second time yeah. i dropped f-zero on this show wow. well this is cool the electric technology they can just change the packaging a little bit yeah um and there's a little more freedom with design it has like active drs too there's a drs oh, in the diffuser that goes up and down because highways have drs zones yeah exactly <laughs> is it that that don't, that feels gimmicky a lot of the time yeah. the drs it it is. yeah like the in the in the Wyra, they have those little flaps. The active you know? arrow flaps. That, Ky- so Kyle just drove a Zonda last week. I did. Was so it the best? I drove a Zonda F, uh, P- Horacio Pagani Zonda F. Oh, it was nuts. It it actually it's one of those few things that even for like a jaded asshole journalist, you are buzzing for yeah, like a week after. I bet it was it was really great. I don't want to gush, but it why was, did you drive his Zonda? Um, we were there for another car that will be. 
under embargo for another couple weeks. Um, but as you know, a treat for that, they kind of threw the. Keys. That's a good tease. Yeah, I like that. I like where yeah. they do that shit. That's a good tease. Go old it Horatio. And the old old Horatio. No, the Wira Active Arrow is basically the car version of watches that have like tourbillons and like multiple yeah. escapements yeah. and like they've lost me double barrel basically springs. yeah like <laughs> basically like a watch where you can see a bunch of shit moving like when you can actually like a tourbillon actually takes the escapement and spins it around so that it's not uh, on uh, affected by gravity the same way all the time it, it uniformizes if that's a word the gravity around so very expensive watches we're talking like a hundred thousand dollars and up often you can just look at it and just see a bunch of shit moving in there and that's like a feature and it's kind of like the wire up because it's theatrics it's right? theatrics and, and stuff yeah, moving. yeah i mean it's yeah. functional but it's also like Look it! Look it! Look yeah. it! I mean, <laughs> does, it, does it tell time that much? A hundred thousand that much money better than a watch that costs not that much. It uh, does money? tell time better sometimes. Yeah. But um, what about then a Timex? Does it tell time better than a Timex? Eh, quartz, a quartz maybe. is still. I mean, still better. Like shitty okay. quartz over the course of a month, it probably tells it better. Yeah. Better but there's really better. nice quartz. Like you can get Grand Seiko quartzes and stuff are extremely accurate. Let's just Casio turn this into just, a watch podcast. No, that would make me so no. Casio right literally came out with yeah. the most accurate watch in the world. It's a quartz watch. It's like not expensive does it have a calculator on it no it's just a regular watch oh, but it's okay. but it's um yeah by the way the watch watch and listen podcast i just recorded the last uh two episodes and, and i'm ending that show we, the agreement with the Cal crown and caliber was for 50 episodes and we did 51 and uh i'm giving them the channel so they're gonna maybe find new hosts and keep it going so don't like unsubscribe just like let let it let's see what happens but it's like uh, giving top gear new hosts do you, you know, imagine right? if Jeremy James and Richard ever left Top Gear? Man, that <laughs> show would be terrible. That'd be sh Oof. Uh, let's get through the rest of these. Swerve in 08 says, oh, mentioned that Tesla's not happy with me. Yeah, what happened? I speak the truth about te what Tesla does on Twitter, and they won't give press cards to people who do that. Um, thoughts on a Model 3 long-range rear-wheel drive versus a Kia Stinger GT? Why would you... Uh, is That's this a an question? cross shot. I mean... I would. There's well, a bigger question you need to answer. There is: Do you want an electric car at all? Do you have a? Assume you if yeah. you can charge it at home, and I mean you get the good fast charger in your house, right? Yeah, they're dope. That's a good car to have. If you can't charge at home, if you don't want to get a good fast charger at your house or whatever, you don't want the headache in an electric car. And it, it all depends on your use case, right? How yeah. are you using this car? And I mean, the Stinger is a fantastic car. Model 3 is a lot of fun, too. It is. They're yeah. really fun. Yeah. yeah. So it just depends on how you're using it. I mean, it, I would get a... The Model 3 performance is fast and great, and it can drift and stuff, but the Stinger can also drift. So. Yeah. Get both? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, get both cars. You're saying both. Yeah. Or get a I like the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Genesis <laughs> G70 a little better than the Stinger. The G G70, G70 rules. G70 is the though, rear right? end is stiffer, so it's easier to get yeah. it to break loose. And Interior is uh, wheelbase seems like it's slightly shorter, I think. It so is. It's, it's like six inches or four yeah. inches. I think it's six inches overall. It's either six inches overall and four inches wheelbase or vice versa. I can't yeah, remember. the car. I mean, that's a really that's great a car to drive. It's a really nice yeah. car. I like drift real eyes. Uh, Peter says, "Question for y'all: If we're doing another all cars, that, oh, like a Top Gear style off road shitbox challenge in cheap imported cars, what do you pick? Anyone?" It, assuming you the get to pick, which truth be told, you don't. You're very limited by the availability of supply. Anything Japanese, I guess. That's right. right. Yeah, I'll That's take a century. <laughs> it's like a Sentra. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. I want to do a Pulsar. I just want to drive a Pulsar GTI really bad. Oh, me too. So Pulsar if I could like, lift that by two mm -hmm. inches, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah. That's a good car. I would yeah. look for a Samurai. I mean, that would oh, make it. Like, that would make it. Ports? Yeah, I, I want to make it. That's why I said I'll take <laughs> yeah. a Century, but you got to wait till 2022. I'll get like a Nissan Sunny. Ooh. The Toyota Previa is incredibly competent at off-roading, and I strongly recommend it. Best mid-engine off-roading van out there, <laughs> except for Delica's. Words. No, the Delica's way better than a Previa off-roading. Delica would be sweet. I'd find like a 300,000-mile Delica. That's what I would do. That would be rad. Like the guy who who surfs outside my house who I see all the time, 334,000 kilometers on that Delica. Oh, he hero. lives in it. National Unbelievable. Uh, what's that guy's name, Zach? Scroll oh. up. Mm. Uh, Adrian, Adrian says, I feel the Chrysler 300 is the modern day Crown Vic. Well equipped base model, decent on gas in the V6, rear wheel drive, and lots of space. Agree or no? I, I think no, because every cab 
that's replacing the Crown Vic in New York City is a Camry now. Yeah. Yeah. I think body on frame is not the same as or a Prius. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it has quite the the toughness. Are you saying the Prius or the Camry is the modern Crown Vic? No, the, the Camry in New York City is the modern Crown Vic. But if you're in like on the West Coast, like here or in Seattle or whatever, then then it's the Prius rules. It's just like look what cab. Every look whatever airport cab drivers cab are driving. Driving. Whatever Prius cabs here. are doing, that's that's the replacement for the Crown yeah. Vic. Yeah, yeah. Every mm-hmm. airport cab here is either like a Sienna minivan or a Crown Vic, or not a Crown or or a uh, a, a Prius. Yeah. Huh. Sorry. Yep. Uh, Nick says, favorite weird GM special edition car. I have a 2000 GMC Jimmy Diamond edition. What the fuck is that? I don't even know. Did he did he specifically want GM special yeah. edition cars? Very why can't specific. we we can't include the Nautica Villager? I was going to say my favorite special edition yeah. ever is the Nautica Villager. I'd love to find another one that's like mint and do a video with it. Wow, that Diamond edition stinks. That's fucking terrible. <laughs> that's no. horrible. Look at that sad tailpipe. <laughs> um, no, that's awful. Whoa, whoa. that's oh, really bad. Does that come with the diamond the, edition? It's got a, like some. It's got like a Lincoln Blackwood lower kick plate on the doors. Oh, the Blackwood. The Blackwood. Like, it looks right? like it has a bravado front end on it. Thing. Does it? Go scroll to the right. Zach, this was before G, uh, GM though learned what luxury was by moving to New York though. That's Did they why. put a bravado oh, front man. end on no, it's it? Oh no, no, it's it's still GMC. Special edition GM. I can't like. It's the Hot Wheels Camaros. Oh, oh the, the Transformers edition. The Transformers anything. Camaros. Uh, the, uh, any Texas edition or Missouri edition? Anything? I'm, there's a Missouri edition. There are other states besides Texas editions. Look there at the are. inside of this, though. This is whoa, just, whoa. That's Quilted. where the diamonds are. How do you think that looks with 150,000 ah. miles on it? <laughs> Saggy. Yeah, I don't have a. I liked the the Beretta Z thirty four. Can we? Why does nobody talk about the Chevy Beretta and how great it was? Because it looks yeah. terrible. Yeah. Do you guys know about the where Beretta? the Beretta stands? Do you know about the Berettas at the Beretta factory? So oh, they when did Chevy Beretta Berettas when Chevy came out with the Beretta, oh. the gun company sued. Yeah. They settled out of court. For an undisclosed sum, and as a gift of good faith, Chevy sent over a pair of Berettas, oh, which are sitting in the Beretta Gun That's Museum right. at their factory right now. Huh. It's hilarious. That's I great. should, can, if I can go to Italy and drive one, will you pay for that? Only a if Chevy Beretta. <laughs> Only a if Chevy you. Beretta, but that I drove out of the gun museum. Only if you I think you, I think you might need to have something else on top of that no trip. Else, yeah. Nothing else, no. Go, go drive the Safari Lamborghini and then stop at the Beretta factory there on the way go. back. Yeah. Gosh. You guys, uh, that's, that's that, that, was, that's a, that, good that shit. was a design marvel. That Not Beretta. terrible lines on that thing. Now, did Oldsmobile have anything? Right. Uh, Oldsmobile There's, had the they had the bravada that paced the Brickyard 400. <laughs> <laughs> the bravada. Yeah, I feel like we're getting the, lost the for Alero, a really long time in a five dollar question about this. Alero, the bravada. All right, go up. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, this, this is oh, a great oh, yeah. comment from D1 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 Thank you. who re- likes the recent issues of Road and Track. I agree. They have been fantastic. Thank Travis you. is Thank doing you a great job. Much. Oh, it's everybody. It's a team effort. You know, I wanted the, the leader uh, gets the, the, the Road and Track the car drove great this week. <laughs> I want <laughs> <wanna laughs> we we to thank my sponsors, Hearst Magazines, for uh, putting on a great race for me today. We had, and, uh, we had, a, we had a top five uh, magazine the, uh, this week. The benefactor, uh, William Randolph Hearst, I would like to thank him personally for sponsoring the team. And shout out to you, D1 Sipaku. Right. Great. Thanks, Kyle. Carlos is looking for a track and weekend car. Uh, I, I gave him a ride in uh, the oh. Evora 400 at Laguna Seca, and uh, it is on his short list. What else in that category and price should you consider? For an Evora 400? I mean, yeah. I think that's a pretty good short list that's as it is. Pretty yeah, pretty perfect one, right? That's a what are they, really what, good so car. Wait, they what listed for around that last year? That, that year, year the NSX. Was the NSX, yeah. yeah. Those are more expensive, though. Yes. Grand Sport, uh, Corvette, you could get that cheaper. Uh, right Grand yeah. Sport, Corvette. Corvette, Grand yeah. Sport, yeah. K- uh, Cayman's, Cayman GTS. Cayman GTS. Yeah. yeah. Six, like a six-cylinder last gen How much one. How much is the Evora right now? Or Evora 400? Evora 400 was more like 90? You can, get a, you can get a GT4. That You could get a brand new GT4 then. My friend is selling his Cayman GT4 right now with a bunch of dope mods on it for like 94. Buy that. The new one is 99, right? New GT4? Um, I, ju- I oh, just configured one yeah. the other day. It was is it on sale yet? I think, the I think you can order them. And there's 911s. I mean, there's a lot of 911s in that range. You pick, yeah, pick, I mean, you could just get, a, your options and get a 999. Seven. You could get a 996 GT3. Oh, a man. Really nice Seven one GT3. He keeps asking a question. He says the GS, the C6 GS is also on his list. Manual. Okay. Uh, Great car. Oh, okay. yeah. Love that. 
Uh, yeah. If you're like uh, the 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 Grand Sport C7 is really where it's. I love at. that car. The C6 GS After is a After driving car too. the ZR1 at Road Atlanta, I yeah. went back and did five laps in the Grand Sport, oh, and I was just like, "Oh, well, perfect. this is perfect. It's a perfect car." It After really the ZR1, you can drift the fuck out of the Grand Sport yeah. like perfectly. It's got the best balance. It's it is just the most balanced. Yeah, they're yeah, it's a great C7. car. Fun. Uh, last one. Oh, last one. I have to know, was the DeLorean dollop a wedding present or a coincidence? It was a coincidence. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, it was a coincidence. It had nothing to do with me. Uh, in fact, I'm still I'm still blocked from... Oh, no. David Anthony deleted his Twitter. You're welcome. Uh, Carlos. Carlos. Oh, Carlos said I also... I brought a Federic Constant Watch because I like the looks. Is it decent? Yes, yeah, it's decent. Definitely. It is decent. And nice people. Uh over there. Do you know them? I uh, Are I they went, French? I've gone to Basel World a few years and they Oh, really? Very kind. Do you enjoy Basel World? Um yeah, it's fun. It, it, it's like a um, bizarro car show like in an industry that I'm not really in. Yeah, so it's like and, but the displays are there. very small. <laughs> no, but you go in and like you get to like handle everything with yeah, the cool. with the PR folks. It's fun. Do I they just, have like on the Rolex booth, do they have like a car-sized turntable, but with one watch in the center <laughs> on a small stand, and like a model they, walking around they talking about do it. Do have that? Yeah, they've got all their little displays. But then, like with Rolex, especially, there's all this like pageantry. Like you go into this, you go into a separate room, and then they're like, "Here's all this stuff," and they bring it out in a box, and everyone like puts on gloves, and their hands are shaking. Yeah. It's Rolex they make left Basel like, World. No, 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 no. no. I'm sorry. Who, le- who just left? Ba- Omega just yeah. left Basel World. Sorry. They brought. They're doing oh, yeah. their own thing now. Yeah. Uh, the the whole like Swatch Group or yeah. whatever it is. Because they're oh, it's Swatch Group that yeah. left. Yeah. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Um, Rolex brought. I went to try their new watches on in a hotel suite here, <laughs> and it was the same level of pomp. Yeah. Where they bring you up and there's like. 10 security dudes yep. just standing up there and the gloves and the whole thing yeah. and it's really really it's, ridiculous. It's really funny the gl- because you don't wear the gloves for anybody else but yeah. they set them out in front of everybody and they like really make it a thing. <laughs> um, I don't wear the gloves. No, I don't wear the gloves either. It's very funny. That's great. Travis, does, you know, you don't care about watches. That's at all? not that I don't care. care about watches. I just don't know anything about watches. You should listen to the Watch and Listen podcast. There's 50 oh, I've got fifty hours. Episodes. I've got fifty, 50 hours to 50 get through. 50 one, hours. Fifty-one episodes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, true. Uh, anything else on there, Zach? Or was that the game? That was it. Cool. Great. Um, you guys are off to the C8 launch tomorrow. Zach's going too. I am. Oh, um, see you there. Cool. I'm not going to go. I'm going to film it. I got things nice. to do. I'm going to pick up a car that I can't talk about for two weeks. It's not my not to buy, to to drive. But to anyway, drive. You can't talk about it for two. How weeks. long are you in town for? You want to see? It? You can you can see it later. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, we can talk about it then. Yeah. Uh, road and track new issue. August is on newsstands now. August right? just hit newsstands. September will hit. August newsstand. is the F one one. August is the F one issue. September yeah. is the unexpected issue, which sounds kind of like a medical condition, but also will be a fun read. Yeah, it's got a seven page article on the million mile Lexus. Yes, they left it. Uh, they left it pretty long. I'm pretty stoked on it. I mean, we asked you to write a certain amount of words. I know, and I wrote fifty percent more than that number of words. That's <laughs> true. Well, you're a writer then. That's uh, he that's threw exactly in. He threw in those extra words for free those yeah. extra words you're gonna uh, like the words you get i guarantee it actually you paid me for those words <laughs> i know you paid me for the words i wrote not I the words you used yeah which i like pay for the uh, words you want not the words you need <laughs> i don't know that's not a saying no please um, buy the september issue especially when it comes out because then travis will pay me more to write more right and please read the website because that we're also online now we put the magazine on computers sometimes road and track.com it turns out yeah a uh, bunch of stuff from my sherp story which issue yeah we just put the sherp we one put the on sherp on. story so, yeah we're so Thing we're we're a small team, so I we're catching up on that stuff. But the magazine stuff will hit. The I want to see. As well. Do you think? Um, can I bring a Sherp to the Woodward Dream Cruise? <laughs> that would be <laughs> that would be amazing. Awesome. Oh, they would man. trailer would one so for us. Cool. They would trailer one there for That's us. Actually yes. cool. That's actually yes. Do, 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 Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Anti Woodward car. Yeah. Wheel. Just start driving yeah. over. Cars. Yeah. Just. Dri- <laughs> oh man. No, you should have one brought. This to, you should have one brought it's to got Pebble. A cranberry interior. And then just, driving one around Pebble would be ill. That'd be a. Am- yeah. <laughs> well, you just go around like people are offering. You just go around people. You're driving across golf courses and through lakes. 
books and stuff. And it was great. so fun. We if anytime we wanted to do anything, like we things, can just those go things up there. float, yeah. right? Yeah. So you know, I was I was wondering the other day, why doesn't anybody just like boat onto the grain? You know, well, or like scuba in. <laughs> so you take the sherp and just drive it right. For, up. Like for, what are you for do? years, I wanted to arrive at Pebble Beach on a boat wearing the Dumb and Dumber tuxedos <laughs> with someone with yeah. like some kind of music playing, like Flight of the Valkyries or something, and then just immediately be thrown out forever. Yeah. I what, do, what are you doing? What are you, you doing this year? I added yeah, that he that. should do that, but with actual passes. So when he yeah. got there, he wouldn't be thrown out. Yeah. Yes. and then it would be even funnier. I'm God. I'm ready to do that. I actually I also want to ride. Uh, I want to ride the Vespa 300 from here to Pebble Beach. Oh God! But mainly, so I'll have it at Pebble Beach because that's the perfect yeah. vehicle to yeah. have. You need a bike there, man. I, I'm not a bike guy, but like the traffic has gotten so bad in the yeah. last seven. This is the most privileged thing. Telling the you traffic is thrilling. so bad while well, my driver is trying to get me to an event. <laughs> it is an awesome traffic jam to sit in, yes, but yeah. it would be way better if you could move through it. And then you, you could do. see it. it yeah. would be, it well, would, wait, uh, Matt, why don't you just get like a pickup truck and then put the Vespa in the back and drive well, up Well, Dan there. Neal had the best move ever, which was he, he arranged a Bentley to drive to Pebble and then there was a Vespa waiting at his hotel. Yes. Which I guess if you write for the, the the WSJ, if you win a Pulitzer, you have a little more clout in the <laughs> business. Pull. You've got like three of those, so we got to set. No, there's three of his. Who did I stole Dan Neal? Neal. Yes. Dan Neal. stole three of Dan's <laughs> yeah. Pulitzers. Okay, yeah. all right, cool. So yeah, Rodentrack.com, Rodentrack Print. Get uh, it, get yep. it. Subscribe, like, and subscribe. Um, and uh, if you're in LA and you, oh my god, oh my god, I have all these cars. Where will I keep them? Westside Collector Car Storage. You can find us. Uh, our our Google Maps listing is a real one now. It had the wrong address oh. and the wrong things, but it's fixed. But also, um, WestsideCollectorCarStorage.com. And uh, I am scheduling uh, tours. If you're in a serious customer and you would like a private tour, I'm scheduling tours. So you can uh, get at me through the website. That is all tomorrow for the live people. Uh, we have Alana Shearer. Who is now with what? Haggerty? Who's she writing for right now? Everybody. She's she's freelance, but she rules. Lana's in studio tomorrow at five p.m. Pacific. After what time's the Corvette thing? It's at eight fifteen p.m. Yeah. Oh it's shit! So it's going to be before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to have two really awkward episodes before the. <laughs> All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I'll talk to y'all fools tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>